Five and three, Texas A&M. Three and four, Oklahoma State. Big 12 football in Stillwater. Bill and Gary Reasons up top. And down on the sidelines, Zach Klein with OSU head coach Les Miles. All right, Bill, thank you very much. Coach, last time you and I spoke, your team was ripping down the goalpost after knocking off Nebraska for the first time in 41 years. How do you carry that momentum over to today, especially in these wet conditions, and knock off a very talented Texas A&M team? That uh, Nebraska game was a game that allowed us to look really forward. And in this uh, A&M game, puts us in a special position for the rest of the season. Our guys won't lose any momentum based on that Nebraska game. Coach, good luck this afternoon. Last time Oklahoma State knocked off the Aggies of A&M, 1988, when Barry Sanders was in the backfield. It's a Dr. Pepper Big 12 kick game of the week, and it's coming your way next. Texas a and Oklahoma State ready to kick it off here in Lewis Field as the Cowboys with Cole Farden ready to unload on a nasty rainy day here in Stillwater at Texas A&M with Bethel Johnson among the deep men. 38 degrees, going to stay about there. The high they're saying today, 42 or 43. Rain may dissipate as we go along. Farden. Who's had a knack for booting him out of the end zone lately, does so here. And that means Texas A&M will take over on their own 20. Quarterback Dustin Long, the sophomore, is getting better each time out. Seven of those 15 TD passes were against Texas Tech. The center, Jeff Handgartner, nice job of taking over for departed NFLer Seth McKinney. And in the backfield in the wideouts, Keep an eye on Taylor. He is their leading receiver in catches and in yards. First and 10 at the 20. Long. Going deep. And incomplete. Defensively for Oklahoma State. The Cowboys up front got a huge effort from Kevin Williams, number 58, Big 12 Defensive Player of the Week for his 10 tackle performance against Nebraska. Robinson is a co-captain and signal caller at the linebacker slot. And in the secondary, they've been very good against the run. They feel today they'll be tested against the pass. The veteran Chris Massey leads the way at the weak safety. Second and 10 for the Aggies. And the handoff right up the gut to about the 24-yard line as Weber gets the call. Derek Farmer is out with a bruised shoulder, and as a result, Weber going at the tailback spot. Farmer had been their leading rusher coming in here with 608 yards. Weber's a guy that has had just 27 carries all year, counting this one here today. Better known for his blocking and his pass catching ability. Today he'll get a chance to take the football here. Well, they let him score down there. They've given the ball to him down deep. He's got 12 touchdowns on the year. He's a big, big guy at the tailback spot, though. Long pass incomplete. Intended for Jamar Taylor. And it'll be a fourth down and the time to kick it away. It'll bring on Cody Skates for the Aggies. So the OSU defense carries over its momentum from two weeks ago. They were off last exactly week. Exactly right, Bill. Two weeks ago, they played exceptionally well, especially late in the football game against Nebraska. The Cowboy defense comes out here and doesn't miss a beat. Little play action pass early to start for Texas A&M. Everyone was covered. Dustin Long had nowhere to throw the football. Skates, second in the league at 43 plus per kick. T.D. Bryant lets this one roll away. Gets an Aggie bounce down to the 25-yard line and inside. So, OSU will take over there. And the Cowboys will bring out their sophomore quarterback, Josh Fields. 13 TDs and eight interceptions. Superb against Nebraska with two scoring tosses. The offensive line is held together. It's been banged up for those five 300-pounders. And the backs and receivers, Tatum Bell, we talked about his great performance. Don't forget John Lewis, the number two receiver here. A great compliment to the superb Rashawn Woods. And Josh Fields brings him out. Look at the Ags defense in a moment. First and 10, the ball at the 24-yard line. And the handoff goes to Bell. He dives across the 25, gets a couple to near the 27-yard line. Let's take a look at the Texas A&M defense. Allowing just 17.9 points per, go, per ball game. Ty Warren back, fighting an ankle problem. He's an all-conference selection, and they need him big today. Gamble and Morris are their leading tacklers among their linebackers in the middle. And the secondary, some big-time hitters in Keel and Appel. 
Apparel a little bit banged up as well, but who isn't at this time of the season as we move into November? Second down and seven for the Cowboys. And the pass just off the fingertips that time for Oklahoma State as Lewis, the intended receiver. Bill, you talked about Jackson Appel, the leading tackler for Texas A&M. I'm looking on the field and I see that he's not in the ball game. Keelan Jackson going to move over to that free safety spot. The groin injury that uh, Appel has suffered going to hold him out of his ball game at least early. Yeah, that's a big loss. He had four interceptions coming in, leading this team, and also 69 tackles best on the Aggies. And that's part of the problem with the Aggie defense is defensive coordinator Mike Hankowitz has been telling us, Gary, is that their defense has been on the field more. They've had some injuries. Guys are playing longer, and thus they've struggled late in ball games. And thus the inconsistency defensively. They haven't had the same guys out there to perform. Third and seven. And the completion to Bryant at the 32-yard line. He will be short of the first down. Needed to get to the 35. That'll bring on the punt unit. Gamble made the tackle that time for Texas A&M. T.D. Bryant getting his 19th reception of the year. He is a senior from Houston out of Madison High School. Here's Cole Farden. It's something to keep your eye on today is the special teams. Oklahoma State feels that they have an edge there. Now Les Miles is not a guy that just throws out plaudits, but he's very proud of his special teams unit. Thinks that they uh, may over the course of the game get a big edge there. This one bounces inside the 30 yard line by Farden and we'll take a break where the Aggies get the ball for the second time. No score in Stillwater. The Dr. Pepper Big 12 football game of the week on Fox Sports Net is brought to you by Dr. Pepper and your local Dr. Pepper bottler and Sonic where chili makes it better. Oklahoma State University trying to get to 500 on the year and in the league, three and four, one and two. R.C. Slocum trying to get his Aggies to bounce back. R.C. in his 14th year looking for victory number 123 as the Aggies are five and three, two and two. They've won their two road games in the conference, lost their two home games. First and 10 Aggies and Weber. Bowls out of bounds at the 34-yard line. Paul Dern there to make the stop. Redshirt freshman from Dell City, Oklahoma. When we talked in the opening comments here about balance being important for OSU, Dustin Long, the Aggie quarterback, says they better have it as well. I think anytime you have offense, you need to rush, rush to open up the pass, and also pass to open up the rush. So when you have a balanced offense like that, it helps out the whole team and your linemen, so the defense doesn't always know what you're going to do. This year, 265 a game in the year, 123 on the ground, and they keep it on the ground here on a second and six as Weber, the senior from San Bernardino, California, hit for a loss on the play, and... Good coverage. You know, Oklahoma State with Bill Clay, the defensive coordinator, Gary, is really sold out to speed, and you can see that with this team. Yeah, they've got some players up front that are playing exceptional. Kevin Williams made the tackle on that play, Bill, number 58. He has played very well the last few ball games for this Oklahoma State defense. He is a strong player up front, and he does not stay blocked. What I mean by that is he gets off blocks and makes tackles all the way down the line of scrimmage. Third and seven from the 32. Aggie, second possession, no score. Long, good protection and complete, but a big pop put on Jamar Taylor. And they'll have to kick it away. Nicely done that time by Vernon Grant, the freshman from Duncanville, Texas. Well, the juggle on the play is going to allow him to come up and make the, make the tackle. And actually, Texas a and going to lose yardage on this play. You see Taylor going to come back to the ball. You see it go off his hands. He goes back for the ball, and then the tackle loss about three on that play, Bill. As a result, fourth and 10 from the 29. Skates gets the kickoff. Terrence Davis Bryant catches on the 31. Dodges a couple, 40, 50. Bryant across to the 35 yard line. And a flag is thrown back on about the 33. And Gamble making the tackle. We talked about the kicking game, Bill, being special in this game for the Cowboys, and that was a big return there, but they're going to have a penalty to bring it back. A 41-yard punt, but instead of getting the ball at the 30, I think they're going to mark it about the 36, we'll bring it way back. Well, there's that. Illegal block in the back. 
10 yards, first down. There's that special team talk that Les Miles was commenting about. Well, we'll take a look here. Gonna watch and see here. We're gonna be a block right here on the left sideline right here. Take a look. Take a look and get him right in the back, right at the point of attack. It's a, it's a good call by the official. But nonetheless, Terrence Davis Bryant shows that he's got some ability in the open field in the punt return game. We'll take a look at that as the game goes on. You see some big things from him today. Oklahoma State, first and 10 from its own 23. Bell, the lone running back behind Josh Fields. Tatum Bell with it. Bell, knocked out at the 30. Let's talk about the Cowboy game plan as Gamble makes the stop. We see Tatum Bell running well to the outside. Nothing new about that. Keep up the momentum defensively, offensively, how they built last week against uh, the Nebraska team and corral the Aggies offensively. I think they get to do a good job stopping that running game, make them throw the football, and offensively stay balanced. Do what they do best. Throw the ball outside to Rashawn Woods. Run the ball with Tatum Bell. That's how this Cowboy team is going to win this football game. OSU has been throwing it for 226, running it for 134 per contest. They're faced with a second and three at their 30. Bell spins across the 30 to the 33 yard line. Very close to the first down, depending on the spot of the football. And that's Keelan Jackson coming up, making a tackle again. Safety there. Safeties will make a lot of tackles here for Texas A&M defense this year. We talked about Appel, the leading tackler, Terrence Keel, the strong safety. And that time Keelan Jackson coming up, making a play. Jackson, a sophomore from Garland, Texas, at 6'1", 240, or 210, I should say. Bill, he was a linebacker in the spring. They had to move him to defensive back. They needed some depth there and getting a chance to play early in this football game. Game of inches? I think so. <laughs> There's a situation for Oklahoma State. As Les Miles looks on, boy, has this guy caught everybody's attention, ending the year last year with a big victory over then fourth-ranked Oklahoma, knocking them out of the Big 12 championship game, and then after, I believe it was seven coaches before him, had never beaten Nebraska, Les Miles in his second year turned the trick two weeks ago. Tim Burrow in the backfield for Oklahoma State. They burrow forward and get to the 35. First down, Cowboys. Well, Tim Burrow, the fullback, actually lines up the tailback spot, gets right behind Josh Fields when they snap this ball to get the first down. It's going to be the quarterback sneak, but Josh Fields just bangs it ahead, and Tim Burrow helps him along the path. So with 10-14 to go in the first quarter, Oklahoma State will maintain possession. A new set of downs to work with at their own 35. Badger Moon motion. Fields, play action. Complete at the 49, make it the 50-yard line, move the change as Weston makes the tackle. A 15-yard pickup for John Lewis, the wide receiver. Well, you mentioned John Lewis a couple of plays ago about, hey, don't discount him in this offense. Josh Fields showing that he's got a good, strong arm. The little intern there by John Lewis on the outside. Good job of getting in front of Weston, who makes the tackle. A couple of threats here offensively. We haven't seen Rashawn Lewis in the action yet. Expect him to get there, and, but John Lewis shows that he can grab him as well. First and 10 at midfield for Oklahoma State. Bell bobbled for a moment, then tucked it away, but he lost his momentum there. Got a yard or two near the 48-yard line. We've talked about balance with these teams and how they want to set one another up. Let's take a look at the matchup and what to look for today. Well, this is balance. You know, play selection this offensive season here for Oklahoma State, 262 passes and 240 rushes. And take a look at Texas a and defense. Still a powerful defense, only allowing 17.9 points a game. They struggle a little bit, Bill, but they're still playing good defense up front. Yeah, the 38-point game that they gave up last week against Nebraska and then that wild overtime 48-47 loss to Tech will mess up your averages. OSU keeping it on the ground across the 45 to the 43-yard line, and Bell once again coming up with it. Offensive coordinator Mike Gundy talking to us about Bell and before the Nebraska game, he said, I don't know if we've got a 30 carry guy. <laughs> Gary, well, it's been, he gets 33 for 182. Well, it had been, you know, running back by committee. They've used Seymour Shaw, who's got an ankle injury. He's out for the year. And uh, Vermont Lawrence, he also played playing that tailback spot as well. And they see another one in there. But 
Right now, they're going to go with Tatum Bell. He showed that he could do it against Nebraska, and I think they're going to hang their hat on him. Yeah, they're feeding him the football, and of course, it's all to set up their passing game. Third and four. Fields falls coming away from center. May have stepped on. I think he got his foot stepped on with the guard or center turning out, and he's talking to his right guard there. Or is that the center, Ben Bowie, who steps back and tries to get him? We'll take a look at it here. Maybe his right foot's going to step right on Josh Fields as he steps back. Watch it right there. Let's take a look there and see what happens. He steps right on his toe. Good job, the camera people, getting that one. And you know, one thing about that play, Josh Fields could have tried to hand the ball off, but he smartly went down with it. Could possibly have been a fumble. Barton's punt. They stay away, and it is down inside the 20-yard line. No score, 7.35 to go first quarter, Big 12 football. No score in Stillwater on a homecoming Saturday at Oklahoma State. Fox NFL Sunday returns this week when J.B., Terry, Howie, and Jimmy get you ready for kickoff. This week, we take a look at Emmett now that he's the NFL's all-time rushing leader. Plus, conversation with Jerry Rice as he gets ready to face the Niners for the first time. Fox NFL Sunday returns this week at noon Eastern, 9 Pacific, followed by exciting NFL action. First to 10 for the Aggies. Long rolls out and completes it. Joseph, the receiver, brought down near the 27-yard line. Keith Joseph, and let's take a look at the Aggie game plan. Well, not a lot of surprise here for Texas A&M. Keep throwing the ball with Dustin Long. He throws it well short, and also got some deep balls also. The defense inconsistent. Used to be the wrecking crew, wrecking who. Want to see how well they perform today. And kick the habit, what I mean by that. They've got to play well in the special teams. Their kicking game has been kind of a surprise for Texas A&M this year. You never know what you're going to get when they go out there and line up for an extra point or a field goal. Yeah, it's been like digging into that Cracker Jack box, hasn't it? And R.C. Slocum says, we need to fix that. But he's been very patient with that whole situation with the young kicker. Second and one on the 27. Long. Plenty of time. Complete. Taylor. First down Aggies near the 45-yard line. And Gary, 18 yards on the pickup. He gets that kind of time, he'll have a big day today. Well, Jamar Taylor's got a lot of speed on the outside, and so they're respecting that. Brooklyn Holmes Miller, who has coverage out there, and Miller just going to work down the field. A little Q route. He gets separation from Miller that time. Does a nice job coming back for the football. Jamar Taylor's an experienced receiver and does a good job for the Aggies. Had a couple of 100-yard days to this year, 118 for La Tech and 6 for 128 and a touchdown against Texas Tech. Taylor's really coming around. Junior out of Mission, Texas. First to 10 at the 45 and on the ground. And let's go down now to Zach Klein on the sidelines. All right, Bill, thank you very much. The field conditions are really not that bad. Yes, as it is. Quarter, second and nine at the 45 of Texas A&M for the Aggies. Weber, the handoff. Weber near midfield, ridden down hard by the Cowboys, picks up five, and Paul Duran makes the stop. Bill, we talked about here the temperature here on Texas A&M sideline. See the jackets they've won't got out there. I think it's actually great football weather, but a lot of players are electing to put the jackets on. I'll tell you, these Cowboys on the OSU side, not one jacket out there. I'm not sure Les Miles would even let them take them out there. He said that's a mental thing for them. They don't need to have those jackets out there. They're going to go out there and play and play hard. And you know, guys that come from the south to the north, they think that's an advantage. Well, the coaches all have their jackets, of course, but uh, that's for the players just to be mentally tough, right? That's exactly right. Yeah. Injured player down for Oklahoma State. In speaking of injuries, this is an area that Oklahoma State gets again a little bit of edge, Gary, because they had the week off after the victory over Nebraska. Two things, a chance to come back down to earth and also to heal up, whereas A&M has been beat up and coming off a loss, a little bit different story. We'll, we'll talk more about that in a moment, get you an injury report. Stay with us. No score in the first quarter here in Stillwater. No score as Clay Coe being tended to on the sideline following an injury. We'll take a look at it here. So stay with us and we'll show you what happened to Clay Coe, the lineman out of Edmond, Oklahoma, 6'2", 280. Oklahoma State on defense with the Aggies moving third and five. Long again, great protection, and finds Porter for the first down inside the 40 of OSU. Milligan making the tackle for the Cowboys. Unfortunate for Clay Coe, what happened to him? Defensive tackle doing his job on the defensive line for the Cowboys, and 
Tell you, he was engaged on that when he got hit. Porter does a nice job on the reception, though, for Texas A&M, the big tight end. Let's take a look here. Here's Clay Coe. He's going to work inside, and watch what I mean by engaged. The right guard is going to block him a little bit. Then you have a cut block, and that is illegal. You're not allowed to do that from the backside. They're trying to climb, and Clay Coe gets uh, blocked below the waist when he's engaged. The penalty was called, though, first and 10 at the 40 after Porter's reception. Goins gets to the 35. First carry for Dwayne Goins. He is a senior from Lamarck, Texas, and Milligan again makes the tackle. Senior out of Oklahoma City for OSU. Well, Bill, you see the versatility that Texas A&M has offensively. Their whole offensive game plan is set up around running the football and play-action pass. The play-action pass to Greg Porter for the first down. Now you run the first ball on first down. You keep the Cowboys' defense off balance. And that's what uh, they like to do offensively. Kevin Sumlin, the new offense coordinator, called plays here for the for the Aggies. R.C. Slocum made that change about five weeks ago, and it has paid dividends. Six plays, 47 yards on this drive, and on a second and five, the completion to Johnson. He's out across the 30 to the 29-yard line, very close to another first down for Texas A&M. Grant with a tackle. They may measure again. Yeah, they may measure. It's going to be close to a first down there, Bill. Let's take a look here what to look for in this football game. Texas A&M offensively, they're, they're passing the ball very well, 265 yards a game. That's second in the Big 12. Take a look at Texas, excuse me, the Cowboys defense, 10th in the Big 12 against the pass and rush and allowing 26 points a game. Pretty good contest here. Offenses going against defenses. A couple teams that approach the game offensively very similarly. An excellent matchup here today with... And sophomore quarterbacks paired against one another and the first down chains do move so the Aggies keep the drive alive seven plays so far in 53 yards and now getting into field goal territory with no score clock winding 434 first quarter first and 10 at the 29 Joseph and Weber the backfield long to throw it got hit Thrown with that pressure that Oklahoma State was able to get on him. Well, when you're going to put pressure on the quarterback and disrupt a passing game, if your defensive lineman can do that, you're going to have a good opportunity to do it. Kevin Williams is inside number 58, and there's nobody going to be able to block him right through the middle of the field. He's strong. I told you he doesn't stay blocked. That's exactly what happens here. Good move that time, and he gets the quarterback as he throws the football. Dustin Long unable to get that pass out to the receiver because of Kevin Williams in his face. Kevin Williams, senior from Fordyce, Arkansas, with 39 tackles on the year and has been picking it up the right time. And certainly Les Miles said his dominating performance as Williams has had in his career was the effort he gave against Nebraska. Second and ten, long to throw again. Got a man, Porter, he's at the five, dies, but is just short of the end zone. Grant covering on the play. Greg Porter, the senior tight end, Gets 28 yards. This guy is the number three tight end of the nation receiving-wise, and here's why. Oh, he's been a big surprise for him. He lines up anywhere out there on the field at the wide position. What he does just gets runs a little route inside, gets away from the defense, runs up the seam in the middle of the field, dusted long. He says, hey, I know that big tight end can catch it, so I'm going to toss him the ball. You see the numbers for Porter on the year. Young man's having a great season. He's, he's a kind of a seasoned guy out there, Bill. He's had some experience. Major League Baseball player prospect was on the bus, was on minor league baseball team. So he knows a little bit of competition. First and goal, and they throw for the jump ball situation. And incomplete there in the end zone as Porter, the intended receiver, and Williams was covering. Durant Williams. Yeah, Porter, a guy in the Anaheim organization. And, you know, he was watching a lot of that World Series. But the guy was a great baseball player, and as you would expect, he's got excellent hands, and he's a little bit quicker than he might appear to be. Yeah, he's not the big guy, not the big blocking tight end, but he's the kind of guy uh, that I think can go out in space and do well. He'll come in and block a little bit. He's out of the game now. you got big people in there, though, for this uh, second down. Joseph, the man in motion on second and goal for the one, and into the end zone is Weber. Joe Weber, here he mentioned early on, they like him down near the goal line. He gets his third touchdown of the season as Joe Weber, the senior, puts the Aggies on the board. 11 plays and 82 yards and impressive for the Aggies offensively. And on for the point after, Todd Pegram. He's 23 of 23 this year. Porter is the holder. 
and it's good. Texas A&M, a 7-0 lead here in Stillwater with 3.45 to go in the quarter. On the kickoff. Massey to the 30 and out near the 35-yard line. Great return that time by Chris Massey, the senior, of 27 yards. This fall, get your NFL fix a day earlier with the most outrageous, unpredictable NFL pregame show you've ever seen. It's the NFL show on Fox Sports Net with Michael Irvin, Tony Saragusa, comedian Tommy Davidson. Pregame shows may never be the same. Start your NFL weekend the night before kickoff with the NFL show presented by the U.S. Postal Service. That's tonight after college football and tomorrow morning only on Fox Sports Net. Well, let's see if Oklahoma State can answer. Good field position to start this drive. First and 10 from the 36. Tatum Bell cuts back. Bell, 50. Bell, say goodbye. Touchdown, Cowboys. 64. Nebraska and bust one for 64 and a chance to tie it up here if Luke Phillips can hit the PAT. He does and Phillips is 25 of 26. Bill, we talked about Tatum Bell at the beginning of the show. Powerful back, a lot of speed, and he shows his speed here. Going to run inside defense, hat on hat offensively, and he cuts back against the grain. Safety falls down, unable to make the tackle. Everyone else is in man coverage on the play. No one was able to come off their receivers to make the play. Mike Hankowitz in defense, they said, hey, we're going to lock up with the receivers outside and go press coverage, and that leaves no one in the middle of the field, and Tatum Bell cuts it back takes you to the house. Well, we have really seen, personally, this guy come along, junior out of DeSoto, Texas. We had him against Texas. He was had the 45-yard TD run. Kansas State, he had 63 yards on 15 carries. Nebraska, the career day of 182. And then today, they've been feeding it to him early, Gary, and he responds as Bell now, six carries and 82 yards already. And he's seen a little of his handiwork, too, looking over to his left side of the big screen here and running the watching the play, and he smiled a little bit. He liked his work. And if he glanced up there on the run, he knew he could coast into the end zone. You know, Zach Klein talked about the field being a little slick. We saw one of the safeties slip down, couldn't get up. That was actually a Pell back in the football game, a safety coming in there to play, and he slipped down and lost his footing. And the kickoff. Hard. Bethel Johnson taking it at the one. Johnson circles back to the 10, flag thrown, 20, scampers out of bounds on the Aggie sideline. Bethel Johnson on the return of 26 yards if it stands. See the official pointing back. And the call is against Oklahoma State. Well, Bill, what happens here on this young man tries to go through and break up the wedge, but he goes below the waist. Well, you're going to see here and watch right there. He goes below the waist and cuts the wedge. Actually hits big tight end number 98, Thomas Carragher, and Carragher was down, hit him on the knee and just below the knee. And that's a good call by the officials. That's a safety thing and a protective thing. For you're going to take a look here. Watch on the right side of your screen. Young man comes through and submarines below and hits Carragher right on the knee. That's an open field thing. It's a it's a protection penalty. And, that's a good call by uh, by the officials. Homecoming crowd that has just about filled Lewis Field. Certainly not an approval, but uh, as the replay shows, the correct call is made. And the Aggies get the advantage of that penalty, and they get excellent field position now. Texas A&M with a tie game at seven. First to 10 of the 41 of the Aggies. Play action, watch out! Cowboys coming through. Kevin Williams there again. Williams 
Well, a little misdirection here, trying to do the bootleg pass, but Kevin Williams comes through there. No one can block him. Watch him right here and just go straight ahead for the Cowboys defensively. You see the turn blocking there. The center can't block back to get him. That's Jeff Handgarter. He missed that block on Kevin Williams. Bill, he's got good size, good quickness, and he explodes off the football. Nine-yard loss on the sack for Kevin Williams, his second sack of the season. Now the Cowboy crowd gets into it. Second and 20. So we'll give him a 10-yard loss on that. And the ball at the 33-yard line. Out of the shotgun, long. Complete at the 35 and flags everywhere. Terrence Murphy, the receiver. And I think we're going to have a holding penalty on the outside here. Over Craig making the stop. We'll find out the call here in just a moment. Yeah, I think they split Greg Porter out to the to the near side, and he's a lines up as a wide receiver. And I think they're going to get him on the hold on the outside, Bill. Take a look here on the left side of your screen as the screen pass comes out. Look at Greg Porter. He's right here in, engaged and a little bit of a takedown. Yeah, I think that's the, the correct call. <laughs> Two points. W. This is a, w. This is a big wrestling Ow. school here, <laughs> Oklahoma State, of course. Uh, numerous national championships of wrestling. They know all what takedown is about. And uh, the call is going to be made. Well, if you happen to tune away for a moment, shame on you, as after the Aggies had that very Holding. dominating drive. Offense. Ten yards, previous ball. Replay second down. Of 11 plays for 82 yards and Weber capping it off. Tatum Bell bounced right back with a 64 yard touchdown run. And we start all over. 219 to go here. Let's go down to Zach Klein with more on injuries. All right, Bill. Uh, earlier in the first quarter, uh, Clay Coe went down. The sophomore uh, defensive lineman from Edmond, Oklahoma, went down with a, a left ankle sprain. They just plan on retaping the left ankle, and he expects to come back later on throughout the game. All right. Thank you. Second down and 30. The ball on the 23 as the Aggies go in the wrong direction. Long. Brought down on the quarterback draw. Duran and Williams there again. Well, they got to find a way to block that young man, or he's just going to ruin this offensive performance here by Texas A&M. Kevin Williams, number 58. Little pressure here inside. He just beats the double team. There's two of them on him, and Kevin Williams goes through there. Dustin Long trying to do the quarterback draw here on second and long. Nothing going against the Cowboys. You know, Bill, last week against, last time out against Nebraska, they put Kevin Williams, you know, on the three technique, tried to work him there, but that didn't work well. They moved him back to the two technique inside against the guard. Hey, it's been superb. Well, he's happy now. Third and 31. Long. Watch out. Nearly picked off by Craig. Brother Williams. Durant Williams, number nine, the closest man to it. Uh, trying to get the ball to Terrence Murphy, but Terrence Murphy's trying to run a little shorter route. Justin Long, see him throw the football. He's going to have Murphy going to go down and work inside and get back out. Murphy's going to be underneath him, but Dustin Long thinks he's going deeper, and the ball is way overthrown. Texas A&M with skates. He's averaged 46 yards per kick on his first two. He stands inside his 10 and shanks it but got a nice roll, and it comes across near the 40-yard line of Oklahoma State, a 38-yard punt. He was fortunate with that roll to get that. Well, Cedric Benson, the Dr. Pepper Big 12 Player of the Week, the Texas tailback, 199 yards last week in the win against Iowa State. Tell a little pep in his step, Dunny Bill. Runs through the hole real well. Cedric Benson showing, hey, I'm not just a big back. I've got a little speed also. And dives in for the score here. They're going to need all he's got tonight as they venture to Lincoln, Nebraska, where they've got some nasty weather. Game you'll see tonight on Fox Sports Net. Texas and the Cornhuskers in Lincoln ought to be a dandy. Six o'clock on Fox Sports Net. The pitch to Bell, and Bell scoots to the 45 and 47 yard line. I've never understood why offenses do this. They pitch the ball to a tailback and he runs between the tackles and 
Tatum Bell, though, hey, he just does it real well. Just finds a hole. Take a look here at the numbers for him. Tatum Bell, that longest given up by the Aggies since 1995. No long runs, but uh, Tatum Bell in that last last series and the touchdown, huge play for the Cowboys. Yeah, that's the best of his career here at OSU. The reverse. Lewis, 50. Lewis just tightrope and goes out of bounds near the 40-yard line. John 13 Lewis, yards. Yeah, John Lewis, we saw him catch a ball earlier in this game, and now he's showing he's got the speed to take it on the reverse. Mike Gundy told us, hey, we've always got one in the game plan. We're going to run the little reverse here to, to him. Watch the blocking. He got one here, and then the block on the outside. If he just gets it right in that seam, he's got a big play, but he stays to the outside. Nonetheless, a big play here for Oklahoma State, and the ball's moving. Offensive coordinator Mike Gundy, of course, former quarterback here, telling us, I don't know if we've got enough time to run some of those plays to set them up. But they've really got a &M on their heels right now. That's a great call there. First and 10 on the 40. Badgerman motion for the Pokes. We're tied at seven. Play action. Fields. Looking for Woods. Overthrown near the 20-yard line. And the Cowboys, of course, won the flag thrown. Davis covering on the play. Rashawn Woods has been silent so far. But, boy, he's like... Uh, a basketball player that gets a little bit of a zone, Gary, and all of a sudden he catches one or two and he pops loose. Well, first time here, they'll throw the ball to Rashawn Woods. Sammy Davis down to the, down to the bottom here. You'll see him come inside. Watch on the backside as he stay on him. That's Rashawn Woods creating the contact. I think it's a good non-call. Yeah, Woods is a guy that you look at him, you think, all right, he's not too impressive physically. 6'2", 190, but he's wiry, he's strong, does a great job of getting in any position necessary to get the football, and he really is nifty at fighting people off. And they say he's got great body control, Bill, and he's exemplified that many, many times. Second and 10, Fields to throw it again, and just off the hands of Badgeman, I think, got a touch on it, a little bit overthrown. Stops the clock with 14 seconds to play here in the first quarter as Smith had put the pressure on the quarterback fields that time. Pokes will be faced with a third and 10 now from the 40. Third down, if they look at a situation where you pick up one here and you get into field goal range. Out of the shotgun. Fields. Complete and inside the 30, they do get the first down. Lindsey gave Lindsey the receiver. Gamble makes the tackle. The Cowboys take it down to the 26 yard line. That's the end of the first quarter. Well, wait a minute, seven seconds and we may get another play. We'll see if OSU wants to hurry up and try something here. 14 yards on the pickup. And that'll be the end of the first quarter now. So Gabe Lindsay with his seventh reception to get the first down. That's the end of the first quarter, and the score is 7-7. Quarterbacks and running backs, big plays here today. We're tied at seven. The Dr. Pepper Big 12 Game of the Week on Fox Sports Net. Yeah, it is homecoming, and the fountain is orange here in Stillwater at Oklahoma State University. Welcome back, Bill Land and Gary Reasons with you. Wow, what a first quarter play. Yeah, a lot of excitement here. Texas A&M comes in, gets a score on the board, but I tell you, Oklahoma State answers right back. Tatum Bell showing, hey, I've got the speed to take it to the house, gets a one on the board, and the Aggies are marching the end. You no, know, the Aggies on defense, Bill, a little surprised. They're not able to handle Oklahoma State. They've got good play calling. Mike Gundy's doing a good job. Get him Tatum Bell in the action. Get your quarterback back there throwing the football well. Good balance, good play Kong, opportunity for them to go, and they're knocking the door here at the 26-yard line. So big first down here on the last play on the screen pass to set this up. And it is first and 10 at the 26-yard line now for the Cowboys. Bell and Burrow in the backfield as Fields wants to throw and does, and it is complete at the 10-yard line. Rashawn Woods stopped by Weston, a 16-yard pickup. And that is the thing with Woods. When you need him most, he is usually there. Well, you're not going to silence Rashawn Woods in this football game. Held in the first quarter without a catch. No, don't worry. He'll come back and catch him. Josh Fields on the play action knows, hey, I've got my big guy outside. I can throw it to him. He'll go and make the catch most of the time and comes up with a big first down. First to 10 
First and goal at the 10, actually. Bell, they fake to him and go to Badgem on the pass. Inside the five yard line. Well, when you have play action, Bill, and you've got a running game that works, it opens up the passing game. That's what they're doing here. You get Badgemo, he's blocking as a tight end on the tight side, and a little pat, a little fake you back there and get your tight end out. Hey, five yards is great on that play and brings it up second, second down and goal, Bill. Badgem is seventh reception of the year, sophomore out of Westmore in the Oklahoma City area. And with the second quarter just underway, Fields looks it over. Second and goal from the two-yard line. Fake to Bell. Fields. Trying to go back to Badgema. And Penwright covering on the play. Josh Fields threw for 192 yards and two touchdowns in the Nebraska victory. And comes in already, as you see what he's doing here today, at 1,408 yards. That is the 14th best single season mark. And Fields, of course, game still to go with Texas Tech, Kansas, Baylor, and Oklahoma. Third and goal from the two. Badgeman getting in motion. Bell. Bell. Ring it as Oklahoma State the lead. Now just power running, get your big tail back with the ball and let him run behind that offensive line. Oklahoma State fans obviously happy about the performance here offensively. Tatum Bell just showing just what he did two weeks ago. He can do it again. Wants to be that every down back here for Oklahoma State. Phillips for the point after. Kick is good. Aggies jumped out to a 7-0 lead. Bell's two touchdowns have given OSU the lead. Run Tatum run as he gets a 64-yarder and then the short one and Texas A&M trailing now. Uh, get behind Kyle Eaton, your left tackle number 65, and get Denard pushing right the, the pile and Tatum Bell gets right in behind those two and the touchdown. And the kickoff oh. short and out of bounds to the 25. Couple of flags. And Kyle Eaton, a nice job plowing into the end zone there to give Bell his second touchdown of the day and fourth of the year. Offside and free kick out of bounds. Penalties declined. First down, 35 yard line, Texas AM. Yeah, got offside here kicking the ball and kicks it out of bounds. So two things against the kicking team. They'll take the ball at the 35 yard line. Yeah, take a look here. Here's the line they can run to. And somebody gets a little early lead there. That young man right there. Don't get his number, but uh, nonetheless here are the Aggies starting the 35 yard line. Texas A&M. First at 10, it's on 35, and a new quarterback as Reggie McNeil comes in in relief of Dustin Long. Hands it off to Weber, and Weber out to near the 39-yard line. Reggie McNeil is a freshman from Lufkin, Texas, highly, highly recruited, has not gotten the opportunity to play as much as they would have liked, but it's been because Long has been just a very steady, if not spectacular. And they said McNeil's been great about understanding. He goes, if you threw seven touchdown passes, would you want to come out? No, and they want to get him into the game. And this is a good situation to get him into the game. I don't know that he'll stay in there because Dustin Long is a great, is a much better passer, accomplished passer than Reggie McNeil is. But they're going to put him in, in a competitive situation to see how well he can perform. Oklahoma State coaches, though, they're concerned because it is a completely different look because of this. Look at the speed. McNeil, the first down as he is hit at the 50-yard line. He picks up a and look at his split. Well, Bill Clay, the defense pointer for Oklahoma State, told us that, hey, if this young man gets in the game, we have to be alert for his feet. What he does with the football, you know, he looks down the field, it's all taken away, but his feet can make plays. He runs real well, Reggie McNeil. One of the packages he's worried about, probably, that the Texas A&M may put in with Reggie McNeil is the option package. Haven't seen that a lot with their offense, but they know that with Reggie McNeil in the game, that play could be a factor. First and 10 at midfield now for Texas A&M as McNeil looks it over. Running back Goins coming up to check the signal. 
then gets the football and goes nowhere. Flag thrown as Williams makes the tackle for OSU. Now they held him and <laughs> they tackled him, but he still makes a tackle. Number 58, Kevin Williams. And they talk it over. Dustin Long, talking about the quarterbacks, 6 of 11 for 69 yards as he goes out and McNeil comes in. Well, the left guard, Billy Yates, got a tough assignment here. He's on the left side. You can see Williams right there and hold him and take him down. Kevin Williams makes the tackle, gets held, and he's made quite a few plays in his football game. He's really impressive, Bill. <laughs> Yeah, and you think of the, the last touchdown for OSU, Gary, it was really set up. AM had that great field position, and then Williams dominating defensive plays, where they ended up fourth and a million, gave OSU great field position, and then they went in. And now it's first and 20. So, you know, AM offensively, the last two series, been going backwards. At the 40 of the Aggies, first and 20, with 12.39 to go, second quarter, and flags again. Stop this one. Well, and here is the problem, is it not, when you switch quarterbacks in the middle of the game? Well, the, the cadence, the rhythm. Let's see if the quarterback barks a little bit here. He's going to have Carragher on the left side here. I think he's going to move a little bit. That's exactly what happens. Pulls his <laughs> hand up. and you got to like Kareem Smith, 95. Say, right there, ref. He there got it. Is, that, that was him. If you need any help, right there. Carragher, he's your, he's your man. So, first to 25 now at the 35. See how Neil does in the throwing game. Drilled it, but almost picked off by Elbert Craig. Oh, and well, Craig thinking, I'd have been going to the house. Well, Elbert Craig, the weak safety. This young man does a good job breaking the ball, but Reggie McNeil, show how comfortable he is in the pocket moving, sets his feet, throws a strike, but watch, watch here, he's gonna come into the screen and Oh, right through his hands, right in the bread basket. Well, and Bill Clay, the defense coordinator, was still moaning yesterday. He said, I know we got to move on, but he goes, we had balls that should have been caught by our secondary that would have won the Louisiana Tech game. They, too, have given up big leads. They led by 18 late in that game and lost. So A&M is not the only team that has been victimized by not holding on in the fourth quarter. Here's McNeil. This one, another bullet, but is knocked away at the 48-yard line. Number three again, Bill. Albert Craig right there on the spot. Ten to two quarter. balls that hit him in the chest, and he doesn't come down with them. You know, another thing Bill Clay told us, he said, Albert Clay needs to make plays in the, against the, in the passing game. He has an opportunity to pick off two balls here in two consecutive throws. Dustin Long throws the ball, and, boy, two chances to make a big play here for the Cowboys. Yeah, Porter did what he could to try to keep the ball from being intercepted. Made a heck of a play in his own right. But Craig, yeah, you know he's thinking, either one of those I should have had. Well, they're good plays, though, defensively. Yeah. They're big stops, you know. Now Texas A&M third and long here. Tough, tough situation. Third and 25 out of the shotgun, McNeil. Pressure. And this one, underthrown, but he got hit hard in the backfield. Yeah, Greg Richmond from the backside does a good job pressuring Reggie McNeil trying to throw the ball down the field. And good job that time by the Cowboy defense rising to the occasion. Reggie McNeil comes into the game, you know, shakes things up, gets the first down with his feet. Now that he throws the ball, unable to get a first down against this Cowboy defense. Skates, you see his work so far today with his best, a 51-yarder. 12.22 to go here in the first half. And Bryant Davis is deep. Or Terrence Davis Bryant, I should say, as the punt by Skates is clean. And TD comes up with it across the 40 into the 42 yard line. So good field position there. Next week on our Dr. Pepper Big 12 game of the week, the nation's leading rusher Chris Brown and the number 13 Colorado Buffaloes meet the Missouri Tigers and quarterback Brad Smith next Saturday, 1230 Eastern here on Fox Sports Net. We saw Brown last week. Oklahoma fans that are watching saw all they want of Brad Smith when the Sooners escaped from Columbia. And Smith put on a show. Of course, the Sooners and the Buffaloes meeting down the road in Norman later on this afternoon. Another dandy Big 12 matchup. Chris Brown leading the country in rushing per game. 
Wood is on the reception. Excuse me, Gary, as he takes it out to midfield. 49-yard line of Texas A&M picks up nine on the pitch and catch from Josh Fields. I just know that Mike Gundy, the offense quarter for Oklahoma State, is going to find a way to get the ball to number 82 more times than not here in this football game. Shut him out in the first quarter, but now a couple of catches here for Sean Woods. Going to find a, find a way to make some plays here for him. Second down and one. Bell on the pitch. Got a nice job of following his block. Springs for the first down and is at the 44 of Texas A&M. Picks up five. Davis makes the tackle. A little formation adjustment here for Oklahoma State. They bring Rashawn Woods to the sideline. They bring an extra offensive lineman. Go unbalanced against Texas A&M's 3-4 defense. The lineup, the position allows them to do that offensively. You know, when you block against a 3-4, it's different than a down four, four down lineman. So when they go on balance and move like that, it looks the same because they're able to count from their progression in and makes better blocking angles for them. First to 10 at the 43 now. OSU really got some momentum on its side. And Bell forges for a yard or two down to the 42-yard line. And Oklahoma State, we mentioned Aggies got on the board first. And then Oklahoma State responding with a pair of Bell touchdowns. Here's how their possessions have gone. And we got the three plays in the punt and then the two touchdowns. The long yardage touchdown there by Bell, 64 yards. Great play. And then the little drive, combination of throwing the ball and running the ball and the other touchdown. Oklahoma State's found a way to move the ball here in the last two possessions. Second and nine at the 42. Denard, the fullback in front of Bell in the backfield behind Josh Fields. Play action. Fields. Oh, Lewis. Wide open. They couldn't make the connection. Davis was the man in the area code. Well, what they're trying to do is they're trying to work the corners underneath the wide receivers and bring the safeties over the top. Rashawn Woods is on the left side, and Josh Fields looks at him and says, hey, he's covered, but i got to go back to my other side. i got one guy over there I think I can get it to, and the ball's just going to go right through his hands. Good throw that time. Lewis just doesn't make the catch. Well, and Lewis, we know, can make that catch as you look at Fields reacting to it. Lewis made the spectacular grab that was the sealer against Nebraska two weeks ago. You try to take away Rashawn Woods, and somebody else may have a chance to make a play. Third and nine. Bell the lone back. Lewis, five, touchdown, OSU! Yeah. 42 yards and six points. Another good formation adjustment and good call here by Mike Gundy of this offense. Josh Fields finds Lewis on the outside. They have a bunch pass inside. Lewis goes to the outside. Miscommunication in the Texas A&M defense. And he's left all alone. Phillips for the point after. Yes. 21-7, Oklahoma State taking charge on the Dr. Pepper Big 12 Game of the Week. Welcome back to Lewis Field in Stillwater, Oklahoma. Bill Land, Gary Reason, Zach Klein with you on Fox Sports Net as Oklahoma State is stunning Texas A&M after the Ags jumped out 7-0. Josh Fields just connects on a 42-yard TD pass to John Lewis, and now the Cowboys are kicking it off. 21-7 from the three. And the tackle made near the 20-yard line as Thomas returns it for 15 yards for AM. Let's go back and look at the OSU touchdown. Well, good execution offensively for Oklahoma State. This play action pass you're going to see here. A little fake inside. It's zone coverage. Texas AM defensively throws the ball outside. The safety is held inside because of the tight end route in there. And got a hard corner, which I mean, he stays short for the line of scrimmage. Got the bunch pass. Watch the tight end work at inside and, and handle the safety. You can't get to the outside. John Lewis running free to the end zone. First and 10 at the 22 for Texas A&M. Long back 
in a quarterback. Hands it off, and to the 30-yard line is Fleming. Now for Dr. Pepper game break, let's go to studio and Bill Jones with a shocker. All right, Bill, the last time Rutgers beat a ranked team was 1988, leading number one ranked Miami 10-8 second quarter. Dom Leonetti blocks the Miami punt. Rutgers' Sean Seabrook scores. Rutgers 17, Miami 8 late second quarter. Bill? Oh. Special teams. There you go. Lock a punt, make us get the number one team down. You know, eight teams still unbeaten as everyone chases that prize of the BCS championship game and all the chatter about who might be knocked off this week. There could be some others that could fall. Of course, a long way to go there. McNeil incomplete, batted down at the 35-yard line by Terrence Robinson, the senior linebacker. Or long, I should say, on the pass. Robinson breaking it up. Now they brought Reggie McNeil in for one series, gave him an opportunity to run the offense. And we can give, give you the best situation with the penalties and getting all backed up. Dustin Long back in there. We talked about him more of an accomplished passer. Give these AM the Maggies a chance to, to come back. Down 21 to 7 here. They're going to have to throw the football to make something against this Cowboy defense. AM 69 yards rushing. Oklahoma State with 69 passing. AM 32 rushing. Oklahoma State's 110. Long throws this one and completes it at the 35. Good tackling there on Taylor, though, by OSU. Williams lead the charge as three men quick to the football, just four yards in the play. Yeah, kind of a surprise call there. Third and one, you think they're going to bang it in there, but they elect to throw to Taylor on the outside, the quick hitch route. Good job that time by Dustin Long hooking up with his number one receiver. And again, remind viewers that Derek Farmer, the sophomore tailback from Tyler, Texas, not able to go today with a shoulder injury. So their leading rusher out, Weber, has their only touchdown. He's playing the tailback spot today. First and 10 at the 35-yard line. And to the 38-yard line as Kyle Beck makes the tackle, a senior from Snyder, Texas. You get a chance to play the defensive end spot for the Cowboys. Plays the backside there. Does a nice job sliding down the line of scrimmage. Oshler Fleming gets the carry. Fleming is a junior from Denton, Texas, out of Denton Ryan High School. At 20 carries for 43 yards coming in here today. So the Yankees trying to mix it up, trying to find the right combo. And Gary, nothing else here. They get the first down. They need something to stabilize their offense a little bit, give their defense a bit of a breather, because they're a little shell-shocked, I think, right now. Second and eight. Long, plenty of time. Oh, what a reception. It may not be for a whole lot of yards, but what a grab by Keith Joseph as Joseph gets three yards, but the way he reached back and snagged it, McGee made the tackle. Big guy, big fullback, 6'2", 221 pounder, doing a nice job on the outside. Dustin Long just sets in the pocket and throws it out there behind his receiver. The one hand left pulls it around. Joseph, good concentration, showing he's got pretty good hands there. Most of those fullbacks, they can't turn their neck, can they? <laughs> Very athletic by Joseph. Now, third and four for AM at the 41 yard line. Long. Loops it to Porter, got the first down, and Porter rumbles to the 42 yard line of Oklahoma State for 14 yards and another first down before Elbert Craig makes the stop. Well, Greg Porter is one of those receivers who knows how to get open, and he's working against Foth Carter, number two here in the slot. He's just going to push up, come in, and work back to the outside. See, number two here for the Cowboys, got outside technique, but allows him to get inside, doesn't jam him. Good job that time by Porter and the Aggies. Porter out of Keller, Texas. 29 receptions coming in. Last year he had 15, but he missed five games with a foot injury. First and 10 at the 42. And Cowboys are there to cover on Oshler Fleming. Fleming got maybe a yard. Looks like they'll mark at the 41 yard line for the Aggies. Tough, tough sled against his Cowboy defense. I've been really impressed with the last time, couple times we've seen this football team, Bill, up front. They're, they're not that big, but they're physical. They try to play physical. And uh, when we talked to Bill Clay, he said, we have to have a mindset of being more physical in a football game. And I think they're taking that to heart defensively. They've come up with some huge plays today. Look at this drive for the Aggies. 3-15, this is their eighth play. 
throwing it. Bethel Johnson scampers to the 35, and he got another first down, stepped out at the 30-yard line. So a quick hitch there, and Kabina Amu covering on the play, but 11 yards on the pass reception to Bethel Johnson. Now Johnson's already had a couple of receptions today. He's going to have a quick hitch, go outside to him, a little play-action fake, boom, get it down there out to him. Bethel Johnson just shows his speed around the corner and trying to make a big play here. Johnson, best in the Big 12 on yards per reception at 20.1 and sixth in the NCAA. Came in with 23 grabs for 463 yards and six TDs. First and 10 at the 30 for Texas A&M. Weber just covering the football. Rolls ahead to the 27 yard line. About Take a look at that tailback and the way he's running. Kind of tentative. Joe Weber, the big tailback, just kind of picking his way and looking for a hole and didn't really explode into it. Now, your offensive line, you know, they're going to give you little creases to get into. I think Weber needs to step up there and hit that, hit that hole quite a bit faster than that. Terrence Robinson there to make the tackle. Tenth play of the drive coming up for Texas A&M. 21-7 in the second quarter on a homecoming Saturday at OSU. Rolling out. Long under pressure. Just misses man. Long, of course, has got nightmares of how the game ended against Nebraska where he was intercepted in the end zone trying to tie that game up. This one, he had a man open, but with the pressure on the quarterback by Robinson, unable to connect. And Jamar Taylor's going to run all the way across the field here. He's open on this play. Gets behind the defense, but there's pressure. Robinson, the middle linebacker, is in the face of the quarterback as he throws it. Tough to get the ball to where you want to throw when you get somebody in your face. Long's work today at 10 of 17, and now the youngster face with third and seven from the 27-yard line. That time here, looking for Porter. Oh my, what a grab and a touchdown, Texas A&M. Greg Porter, a sensational catch and run, and the Aggies answer after three straight OSU touchdowns. his third TD reception of the year, and that one was for 27 yards. And now the holder on the PAT. He's good job that time going against Bob Carter and works to the outside. Just wants the football a little bit more and makes a good grab and a touchdown. Now for the point after. Pegram. He connects. Well, Reveille agrees. Aggies not done by any means. What a game. Stay with us on Fox Sports Net. The Dr. Pepper Big 12 football game of the week on Fox Sports Net is brought to you by Dr. Pepper and your local Dr. Pepper bottler. Greg Porter with a TD reception for the Aggies. And it's 21-14. Bill Land, Gary Reason, Zach Klein with you at Lewis Field as Texas A&M will kick it off with Skates. And the Cowboys take it at the goal line. Massey, 20, and hit hard there at the 21 yard line. Let's go back to that pass play from Long to Porter. Well, Greg Porter's gonna be in the slot, gonna work up against Carter, then work for the football, try to get the score. Dustin Long at the bottom of the screen, see what he's looking at the whole time, throwing the ball down the field. Carter's gotta have better technique than that against Porter, who has four catches today. Bill leads the Aggies with 82 yards receiving. Dustin Long, Greg Porter, pretty good matchup today. Here's your scoring drive, 11 plays, 78 yards. Let's see how the Aggie defense now responds after having a chance to catch its breath. And OSU first and 10 from its own 21. Not the excellent field position that they've had the last couple possessions. Well, they come back to Rashawn Woods. He can usually change that in a hurry. And Woods tackled shy of the 30-yard line. Jones covering. Let's go to Zach Klein. All right, Bill, you will notice that Mike Denard is now the fullback for Oklahoma State. The starting fullback, Tim Burrow, has gone to the locker room. They're getting x-rays on his right wrist. Not sure if he'll be back. Okay, thank you. Is the depth being tested here today? Denard is a senior from Oakland, California. Yeah. 
Second and two after the eight-yard pass play to Woods. Bell, the tailback. They'll come back to Tatum. First down, and he bangs helmets at the 35-yard line. To the 35-yard line. Tatum Bell, in his last three games, 53 carries for 304 yards. And then you tack on today, that puts him over the 100-yard mark here this afternoon. And he's going to get over the Nicholas Sutter, number 92, gets taken down there, playing the left defensive end spot for Texas A&M. He goes to the sideline. They're having Ty Warren come back in, try to give him a little spell, but they need big Ty in there to anchor this defensive line for the Aggies. Warren been fighting an ankle injury and uh, did not play against Nebraska. Woods. Boy, that is going to, you know, Woods looks so confident with that. They, he and Fields have that look of we can do this anytime we want it. Jones covering on the play, and the Cowboys pick up six. Just pitch and catch those two. And I, you know, I talked about the top of the show, the Rashawn Woods. No one has really recovered, really been able to recover him this year. A lot of guys have tried press coverage, stay off and give him a little space, but Rashawn Woods just finds a way to get open. Second and four at the 41-yard line, and Bell looking for a hole. They string him out, and the Aggies do it all the way to their sideline. Nice job defensively by Texas A&M. Sammy Davis leading the way there. Rashawn Woods with the fourth best yardage career-wise in Big 12 history, 2,162. Take a look at the receptions per game because he's a guy who can just wear you out, Gary. Over eight receptions a game this year. This young man's only a junior. See how he ranks up here in the country. These guys, pretty good receivers in this conference. Rashawn Woods right on top. He's a big player, big offensive threat here for these Cowboys. Well, Justin Gage, a two-sport performer at Missouri. We'll see him next week when we bring you the Missouri-Colorado game on the Dr. Pepper game of the week. Fields going to keep it. Fields hops over a man and gets the first down. Josh Fields, certainly not known as a big-time runner, but those seven yards, mighty important here. Well, he's got the respect of Jared Morris, number 45 for the Aggies. He's going to see Josh Fields come around the corner. Jared Morris, a linebacker, just tracking him all the way. You see him in the picture there, but a little, little move there, and I'm going to fall down on my tail, which is what happened to Morris, and Josh Fields runs around the corner. Shows he's got a little foot speed of his own. Cowboys with 3.51 to go second quarter, up seven. Keep the football, and doing it on the ground today, 123 to AM's 38. Woods in motion, comes back now. Looking for Lindsey and overthrown. Well, they've thrown two screen passes to Lindsey, one on the inside route, coming through the middle of the defense, got a big first down early in the game. Now to get the ball to Lindsey on his slip screen going to the outside. That ball just overthrown by Dustin, uh, excuse me, by Josh Field. So the Cowboys faced with a second and 10 at the 47-yard line. Oklahoma State trying to even up in the Big 12. They come in at one and two. The Aggies are two and two. Both played Nebraska in their last game. and m losing last Saturday, 38-31. Cowboys winning here two weeks ago. And trying to get back-to-back -back quality wins, which would be a big notch for Les Miles. His short stay here so far. Bell, not much doing there on the carry. And Gamble is leading the charge on the tackle for AM. Ty Warren, you see him there, the big defensive end. Good job at the point of attack there. He's a physical player, Bill. I watched him run around on the field today. He doesn't look like he's moving very well. He's still favoring that ankle coming off the field here. Going to give him a little spell, get some of the speed pass rushers in there. And he's an anchor, though. He, need, he needs to be in there and do well for this football team. They may start to platoon him more in first and second down running situations because I don't think he's got enough speed to get back to the quarterback. Well, if you saw him against Virginia Tech when he had 13 tackles and five for loss, you know he's not the same player today. He is a tremendous talent. Across the middle, Cowboys completed at the 35, and that's another first down. T.D. Bryant picks up 18 on the reception before Weston pulls him to the turf. Sean Weston playing the nickel position here for the defense of Texas A&M. He's got T.D. Bryant in the slot formation. T.D. Bryant just works inside a little arm over and gets in there, gets a step on him, so he makes the first down here for, te for the Oklahoma State. The Cowboys first and 10 at the 35. And Fields wants a timeout here to talk it over. 
OSU trying to answer the A&M touchdown, much the way they did in a different situation later in the game against Nebraska two weeks ago. Oklahoma State with a timeout here. Well, homecoming here. One guy who's not here today, but uh, they certainly wish was here, is their last Heisman Trophy winner. The 1988 winner of the Heisman Award is Barry Sanders of Oklahoma State University. And one of Sanders' biggest games in 88 was against Texas A&M. The Heisman Trophy winner ran for 162 yards, two TDs on just 20 carries. It was the last time the Cowboys defeated the Aggies. They had a powerhouse club that year, 52-15, the final. That was when the Ags, of course, were in the Southwest Conference and OSU in the Big Eight. And Hartley Dykes, the receiver, Mike Gundy, we've talked about the offensive coordinator, was the quarterback then. And that was early, of course, non-conference, and Sanders kind of a coming out party almost before he went on to win the Heisman Trophy that year. Well, Les Miles has got this football team playing well. They're trying to close the gap against some of these teams in this conference, and doing so two weeks ago against Nebraska, and now another nemesis. Texas A&M comes in here. He said since 1988, Bill, they haven't defeated that football team, and this is a big opportunity to make a statement, I think, for Oklahoma State. Yeah, they're allowed to more stopping of streaks after the Nebraska game the last time they were on the field. Play action for Fields and going deep for Woods, and he is held, and the flag comes out as Jones is going to be called for interference. Well, I think Byron Jones is happy just not to have him at the score because Woods is able to get open. Byron Jones is going to have man-to-man -man coverage with him outside. Going to get flagged here for the interference, interference penalty. Defense, 15 yards, previous spot, automatic. First down. Take a look here. He's giving him a pretty good cushion in turns to the outside. Rashawn Woods tries to get separation there. They get tangled up, and Byron Jones just kind of grabs him around the waist there. The ball was catchable by Rashawn Woods the last second there. Doesn't come down with it. That's a tough assignment. Byron yeah. Jones having to go against the number one receiver in the conference. And if you're Mike Hankowitz, the defense coordinator for a &M, you got to say, well, in that position, you saved us a touchdown. Go ahead and give him the 15 yards and take your chances on the next one. First and 10 at the 20 following the penalty. Looking in the end zone again. And incomplete. And another flag is going to be thrown here. Yeah, Davis Rashawn this time being victimized by Woods. Yeah, they just changed sides. They put Rashawn Woods on the, the far side of the field, put him against Sammy Davis is on the corner spot there. And your turn. Yeah, Josh Fields, you know, we're going to throw it up to you and give you a chance to use your athleticism to make the catch. The back judge who's at the middle of the goalpost throws the flag, and there was a side judge there who did not call it. Defense. Half the distance. But the back judge who saw the play throws the flag. And, you uh, see R.C. Slocum very upset about the call. He's going to want this as an uncatchable ball. You can see the ball's actually going to come into this area right here. That's what RC's going to see. He says, hey, the ball's way away from him. Sammy Davis is trying to make the play there and runs over for Sean Woods. Yeah, he would seem to have a legitimate beef there. But back-to-back -back penalty sets it up for Texas for Oklahoma State. At the five, first and goal. Looking for his third score of the day. Tatum Bell gets it. No flags this time. And Oklahoma State making it 27 to 14. So the Aggies score on Porter's TD reception, and OSU marches it right down for 79 yards and nine plays, and now the point after by Phillips. Hold is good, and the kick is good. Bill, a couple of penalties here against Texas A&M. Defensively sets up the touchdown opportunity, and Tatum Bell goes off the left side strong, gets in behind his blockers. He makes a nice cut here. He could go to the outside, but elects to come inside. And number 22, Sammy Davis, can't get him down. Good job of running through the tackle by Bell. Third touchdown of the day for Bell. Lewis has the other. And the Cowboys now lead it 28 to 14 following the PAT. And Tatum Bell 
her first half folks 14 carries 109 yards and three scores of course he had the 64 yarder but he has been steady and getting yardage all day well and it's balance too they're throwing the ball they're passing and they're running the ball well Mike Gundy wants balance for his offense we talked about that coming into this football game and they've got that momentum they built momentum two weeks ago they had the off week and, they, and uh, Les Miles told us he said that off week was good for us and let us get healthy and they had a great week of practice too and so they can't come out today and they played exceptionally well here in this first half. Well, Gary, Oklahoma State, 34 plays, 268 yards of offense. Aggies, 36 plays, two more, 170. So 98 more yards of offense for Oklahoma State here in this first half with just about the same amount of plays. And the kickoff will be down in the end zone, and they'll get the touchback. Let's go to Zach Klein on the sidelines. All right, Bill, coming up in about two minutes on your Sonic Halftime Report. We'll send it over to Bill Jones in the Fox Sports Net Studios. He will bring us up to date on all the college football activity. One game he will definitely be looking at, number seven, Texas Longhorns, visiting Lincoln and the Nebraska Cornhuskers. The Huskers with the nation's longest winning streak at home on the line. Plus, we will preview the second-ranked Oklahoma Sooners at home taking on Colorado. It is the best of the Big 12 North versus the best of the Big 12 South. It's all coming your way in two minutes on the Sonic Halftime Report. Thank you, Zach. Yeah, folks here in Oklahoma, two weeks ago we were here in Oklahoma State, the huge win against Nebraska. Meanwhile, down the road in Norman, OU just plastered Iowa State. Today, Oklahoma and Oklahoma State have something else in common. Neither have beaten their respective opponents in the last 14 years. Yes, it's 1988. Neither team has won. And I tell you, the fans here at Oklahoma State, they're rising their feet. They're happy how the Cowboys are playing. Yeah, OSU trying to do its part. OU will meet Colorado later. 28-17, or 14, I should say. And the pass nearly intercepted, but Taylor comes down with a circus grab and has the first down at the 20-yard line. Well, the ball goes through Greg Porter's hands. The ball is thrown high by Dustin Long. Greg Porter can't pull it down, but good job by Taylor coming through. Take a look here, and you're going to find Porter right there, number 44. The ball is thrown high. He goes up for it. But Jamar Taylor on the route behind him pulls it down and tries to make a play running after the catch. If Taylor doesn't get that, I think Durant Williams does get the INT. Long delivers to Porter. He drilled that puppy, and that's at the 35-yard line where Elbert Craig makes the tackle. So the Aggies, I like this, Gary. They're sitting down here, two touchdowns. They're not worried about getting in the locker room. They're trying to score. That's exactly right. You have to come back and have to throw the football. That's what they're doing here. Dustin Long is a capable passer. He knows how to run this offense in a two-minute drill. First and 10 at the 35-yard line. He got rocked, but he got it off to Porter. Another first down and out of bounds. Porter scampers out at the 50, a 14-yard pickup. And Long may be glad he didn't have eyes in the back of his head because he wouldn't have liked what was coming after him. He got hit that time, but Porter, I tell you, he's working Carter, number two, who's coming off the field for the Cowboys. He just can't, he can't win that matchup. Porter working from the slot formation, working to the outside and doing a good job getting open. Five catches now in the first half for Greg Porter. Porter, five for 98 yards. He got six catches. He's having yeah. a heck of a day, Bill. For 111 with a first to 10 at midfield. Incomplete this time as they were looking downfield for Terrence Murphy. Great break on the ball that time by Craig, by Craig the yeah. defender of the weak safety coming up. It's three balls now he's had an opportunity to at least make a play on. Two of them were almost interceptions in that, play, that ball there. A good pass breakup. 123 to go, first half. What an exciting first half we've had here on Fox Sports Net. Dr. Pepper, Big 12 game of the week. It is second and 10 at midfield. Long to throw. Unloads incomplete, intended for Porter. And Long, again, faced big-time pressure. Looked like Richmond was in there leading the way. Well, Texas A&M wants to do something here right now, Bill, to get some momentum going into halftime because they, walk, they did not win the toss. The Cowboys won the toss, and they'll get the ball to start the second half to keep this momentum going. Yeah, good point. The Aggies have three, all three timeouts remaining. Oklahoma State has two with 1.18 to go. It's third and ten. Big down both ways here. And long. It is picked off. And down to the 43-yard line. 
coming up for the interception. Nice comes up with it for OSU and returns at 18 yards. Jay Nice. Big play here in the secondary. Nice going to come up with a big interception. Dustin Long's going to try to throw it down and work the ball to Greg Porter. Actually, the ball's a little overthrown there. Actually, Nice makes a great break in front of the football. Just playing his zone coverage there. Makes a big play for the Cowboys defensively. Nice, 6'1", 205, a sophomore from Thomas, Oklahoma. Redshirt in 2000, played in just one game last year, comes up with an interception, and now OSU, two timeouts, 109 to work with, and the ball at the Aggies, 45, 44-yard line. Bell. And you see the presence there that Ty Warren has on the defensive line, moving down the line of scrimmage. Not as agile as he would be, Gets the first hit there on Tatum Bell. And a timeout called by Oklahoma State after Smith making the tackle. Well, this week it's a doubleheader on Fox NFL Sunday, beginning with America's number one pregame show. And then Donovan McNabb and the Eagles look to soar past Brian Erlacher and the Bears. Then Terrell Owens and the first place 49ers. Battle Jerry Rice and the Raiders as Rice plays against the 49ers for the first time in his career. It all happens on Fox NFL Sunday. Will Terrell bring his Sharpie is the big question. Well, sounds kind of strange. Jerry Rice and the Raiders against the yeah. 49ers. That's just <laughs> not, Something not easy for me. To, to handle. And of course, might have caught earlier, but beyond the glory. This Sunday has Jerry Rice featured. He's not beyond his glory yet. No, he he's isn't. still he's still racking up the numbers. Okay, Oklahoma State here, Gary, thinking field goal or touchdown. Well, I think they want to be they want to keep moving the ball, keep doing things offensively that they want to do, but I think they need to be smart. They you know, they got an opportunity to put some points on the board here, but more importantly, don't throw one out of the flat where you can have a defender pick one off and run at the distance. They've got complete control of this football game and I don't think Mike Gundy's going to do anything foolish here. Dustin Long getting picked off has set OSU up with the scoring opportunity. Second and 7 at the 41. Fields. Lewis. First down. Jones makes the tackle. 12 yards on the pickup. Cowboys will hurry up with the clock to restart as soon as they set the chains. And respect Lewis's speed. Byron Jones giving him a lot of cushion out there. And Fields ready to operate. Nope, just going to down it. Good clock management. Yep. You got a first down. Wants to save that one timeout they've got remaining in case they need to bring on the kicking unit and you got time to do it. Well, what that allows them to do, Bill, is allows them to throw the ball to the middle of the field instead of always to the outside so you can work the entire field. That helps the offense because the defense knows you're not going to throw it in there where they'll take away things outside. Just look at Josh's numbers on the day. Pretty impressive. No interceptions, and uh, that's the smart thing about this quarterback. He has played well the last few weeks and improved each week. Second and 10, the ball on the 29-yard line. Fields. Incomplete. Davis, Davis covering Wood, or their, uh, Lewis on the play. And the ball bounces right off the top of Sammy Davis's helmet. Good job that time, throwing it out there by uh, by Josh Fields. Watch this ball, it's gonna bounce right off of Sammy Davis's head. His right hand got on top of it. Nice play, good coverage that time. Well, Lewis, of course, three catches, 69 yards, and the touchdown. Five different receivers have caught the ball today from Josh Fields. He's spread it around pretty good again. 45 seconds to go, third and 10 at the 29. Here is the first half, winds down. Fields to Woods. Woods, you saw him try to get to the sideline as he, but he got the first down, I believe, Gary. It'll be about a foot short, possibly, okay. Bill. Need to get to the 19-yard the line. He's at the 19 and a half. Clock moving. Yeah, the fans are saying, go for it, go for it. I, I'm not sure here. Les Miles may want to take this time out and evaluate this. Clock still moving. Yeah, they're going to run it down. They're going to wait till until they get down to the last second here and don't have any time left on the clock. Then they'll go out there and try to probably kick the field goal. Yeah, as they wait to call the timeout. And now field signals for it. So they'll have a chance to bring on the kicking unit. 
Well, college football Saturday presented by Curacera returns to Fox Sports Net tonight with a Big 12 showdown. Seventh ranked Texas Longhorns travel to Lincoln to take on the Nebraska Cornhuskers. Coverage begins tonight at 7 p.m. Eastern, 6 o'clock Central, 4 Pacific, right here on Fox Sports Net. As that should be a dandy, Joel Myers, Dave Lapham, and the gang will be up there, Jim Knox, and uh, as they get ready on a chilly, chilly day, I understand, in Lincoln, Nebraska. R.C. Slocum, you see the shaking of his head there as it has not been the first half he envisioned, Gary. No, not coming up here in this hostile environment. His Aggies have not responded well to Oklahoma State and how well they've played. He's got to find some answers and make some adjustments at halftime and he's trying to think of what he needs to say to him to get these troops rallied. He set up for the field goal at the 27 for a 37-yard attempt. Luke Phillips is five of six this year, with 46 being his best. Cox the holder. Oh, it got by him. And it's picked up and then tackled back on the 43-yard line as the half ends. And Penwright made the play. Well, he's Cox the holder, just his second game as a holder. They've had some problems there, and we saw it in pregame. And they had problems here. Let's see if it was a snap or the receiving end. It's going to go right through his hands. Cox, the ball just, he does not grab the ball. And he's the third one they've had holding here for Oklahoma State this year, missing an opportunity here at the end of the half for this field goal chance. That's, that's real disappointing here for Les Miles and his Cowboys. Tough day for Michael Cox on that play, but OSU still got to be happy. Let's find out. Les Miles, the coach standing by, was that Klein. All right, Bill, coach, the last play didn't go as planned, but you got to be impressed with the first half. A long way to go. Team's playing well. Wish we hadn't uh, uh, muffed that uh, scoring opportunity. Offensive line playing great. Tatum over 100 yards and three scores. He's got to keep it going. It's just half. All right. Two quarters left, guys, from Oklahoma State. Improving the record of 4-4 four and four on the year. All right. Les looks like he's ready to play. And uh, what a half. With our score, 28-14, Oklahoma State will join Bill Jones and Spike Dykes for the Sonic Halftime Report after these messages. Welcome back to Stillwater, Oklahoma. Homecoming and our Dr. Pepper Big 12 game of the week. Halftime, it's Oklahoma State by a pair of touchdowns. Bill Land and Gary Reasons with you. Cowboys have been really impressive offensively, and they've done it about every way fashionable, but Tatum Bell's the one that got them going, Gary. They've run the ball very well today, Bill, against this A&M defense. Tatum Bell has shown that, hey, he's a very capable back of taking one to the distance. 64 yards here on this touchdown run alone. This young man is showing, hey, he can be an every down back, 33 touchdowns, 30, 33 rushes a two weeks ago against Nebraska. Two touchdowns here now, the third for, for Tatum Bell getting in behind his offensive line. This young man has shown that he is a capable tailback, and he's got over 100 yards already in the first half alone against Texas A&M. Tatum Bell showing, hey, I can carry the workload for this offense, running the football and doing a good job for Oklahoma State. Tatum Bell and the Cowboys getting ready for the second half. There's Bell's work with 15 rushes, 112 yards, and Oklahoma State really developing the balanced offense that they wanted. We'll take a look at the stats in a moment, but first of all, we're set to kick off, and Nebraska, where the Oklahoma State will receive from Texas A&M as Skates puts the leg to it. Massey's going to bring it out. Ten. And hit at the 15-yard line. Here's a look at the first half stats. And you'll notice that Oklahoma State, 292 yards of total offense. But Gary, the Aggies certainly have the offense to come back in this one. Well, really, the passing yard, you see that there. Dustin Long is capable of making plays in the passing game. Hey, they've made big plays. They've come back in games in the second half. Expect them to play well. And OSU, first and 10 on its own 15-yard line. Fields a quarterback, Bell, the tailback. Lewis hit hard at the 20 a few moments ago. Zach Klein caught up with R.C. Slocum for his thoughts on the first half. All right, Bill, thank you very much. Coach, 38 yards rushing in the first half. What kind of adjustments did you make in the locker room and what can you expect in the second half? Well, at Oklahoma State's playing very well. We're disappointed the way we're playing. We're not playing very uh, well on defense, and uh, we've moved the ball offensively. And whether you have rushing yards or passing yards, we've moved the ball offensively. We just got to find a way to stop them. Coach, appreciate your time. Good luck in the second half. Sure. Second and five at the 20 here for the Cowboys. 
Bernard, the man in motion. Bell, and good pursuit that time by the AM defense as busting through was Brian Gamble to make the tackle. Homecoming here. Boy, they'd like to have him today. Thurman Thomas, the all-time leading rusher in the school's history. 4,595 yards and longtime great with the Buffalo Bills. Back and back to the marshal for the homecoming parade today. Yeah, having fun coming back here at his old alma mater. First time back on this campus in a long time for Thurman, and we're glad to have him home. I'm out of the Houston area, Missouri City, Texas. Third down and five. Fields. Looking for Lewis, covered by Davis. And the Aggies pass the first defensive test as they force a three and out and Oklahoma State. A good job by Texas A&M, regrouping at halftime, coming out, doing what they need to do, stop Oklahoma State in their first possession. And Cole Farden comes on for the punt. He averaged 34 and a half yards. Boy, he booms this one at the 25 yard line. Johnson, 30, 35, and knocked out at the 36-yard line, a 55-yard punt. 10 yards on the return, and Dustin Long brings him out here for the second half. He missed one series where they gave McNeil a shot. 172 yards, one TD, one interception, but the interception didn't hurt as the Cowboys muffed the field goal attempt on a snap that was mishandled. I agree with R.C. Slocum. You get 172 yards out of your throwing game, you got to think, all right, the trouble's not offense. We've got to slow the other guy down. Well, the defense did its job, and they get the field position, first and 10 at the 36. Weber spins just shy of the 40-yard line. Terrence Robinson makes the tackle. Well, just stay within the game plan. They're going to run the power game, get the big tail back in there, Joseph. He's back there because they've got some injuries on the offensive side. The tailback, Derek Farmer's not playing. Joe Weber, I mean, a tailback. And Keith Joseph's moved up to fullback. Derek Farmer with a shoulder sprain. Slight separation, unable to play today. Weber, nine carries for 25 yards. They're a leading rusher. Porter, their leading receiver, six receptions for 113 yards. Second and six, the ball on the 40. Grab just as he put it up, and Taylor could not quite handle it. Covering is Vernon Grant. Nice play at the end of the throw there by Vernon Grant. Catching up to Jamar Taylor. Inside, Kevin Williams going to pressure Dustin Long on the throw. Pressures him late, comes around the backside, and Kevin Williams down there behind the, behind the Aggie huddle. And he had another great first half. Williams, we talked about how strong he was in the Nebraska win two weeks ago here. And he just fell awkward, Bill. He reached around with his left arm and fell to the ground after he tried to get uh, Dustin Long down. Take a look at Dustin Long's footwork here and the pressure applied by uh, Kevin Williams. You see his left arm there? He pulls around and just spins and flops down. Really remarkable there. Hopefully he'll be back in there for the Cowboys. Third and six at the 40 now for the Aggies. And the homecoming crowd trying to make a little noise. Long drops it off to Johnson. Johnson speedy to the 40. Johnson down the sideline, 20, and knocked out of bounds. Vernon Grant makes the stop, but not until Bethel Johnson goes to near the 18-yard line on a 42-yard reception. A lot of defense quarters on third and medium. They're going to go ahead and pressure the quarterback, make him throw it quick. They've got pressure coming in front of Long's face. He's waiting for Bethel Johnson coming across the field on the smash right underneath. Hey, he's got speed built, takes it down the sideline. A huge play here for Texas A&M. Bethel Johnson, we mentioned earlier, leading the league in yards per reception. And you can see why as he turns it on. Of course, he had the ruptured spleen that robbed him of last season, and he has come back on a slow start, but has really picked it up recently. With two touchdowns in the Texas Tech overtime game. First to 10 at the 18 for the Aggies. Weber looking for a hole, finally takes it forward, gets back to the line of scrimmage, it appears, and that was a pretty strong effort to do that. Yeah, you saw Kevin Williams in there pressuring in the backfield. The first one back, he breaks through the offensive line of the Aggies and creating Weber to run sideways and not allowing him to get up into the hole. 
Aggie's got to run, trying to run that power football scheme with the big fullback and the big tailback there. And Kevin Williams, you know, he's tracking the ball down right to the, to the sideline and doing a good job for the Cowboy defense. Second and 10, 18 yard line of OSU. Aggies trail 28 14, first possession of second half. Play action, long in trouble, and watch out. Greg Richmond is there for the sack. Well, when you do the bootleg, you've got to have your backside guard pull outside to get the defensive end who's coming unpressured here. You're going to see the missed block as Dustin Long fakes and comes backside. You're going to see the backside guard pull and miss that block right there. Allows Greg Richmond to make a sack on Dustin Long. Greg Richmond used to be a linebacker and has really taken to that defensive line position. Added about 25 pounds since he's been here. I asked him how he did it, and he said, lots of pizza. But uh, obviously, he didn't miss his time in the weight room and still has excellent speed. Sets the Aggies in a hole, third and 22 at the 30. Long. And it is complete at the 18-yard line. Still 10 or 11 short of the first down. He gets 12 on that reception as Rickland Holmes Miller there. That's Tim Van Zandt getting the catch bill for the Aggies on the outside. Doing a good job. Watch his feet here. He sets nicely, gets his feet down inside, and Van Zandt gets a, gets a nice play for Texas A&M, allows him to try a field goal. Todd Pegram comes on for the field goal opportunity. A 35-yard attempt. Pegram gets this one. So the Aggies put up three as Pegram is now nine of 17 in the field goal department. Stay with us here in Stillwater. Welcome backwards, 28-17 in Stillwater. Pegram with a 35-yard field goal. Well, we showed you earlier Thurman Thomas. This is the guy who kept Barry Sanders on the bench. That's how good he was in college. The number one career rusher, 4,595 yards, 44 touchdowns. This is from 84 when he had 1,613 yards and then on to a long, great career with the Buffalo Bills. Thurman Thomas, one of the best as OSU took over the name of Tailback U for many years. We'll have a chance to visit with him in just a moment with Zach Klein as we get ready for the kickoff and the Aggies put three on the board and boot it away. Skates kick, Massey on the return, going to bring it again. Looking for a hole, 15-20. Massey still going and across the 30-yard line. Now down to Zach Klein with Thurman Thomas. All right, Bill, two-time All-American Thurman Thomas on the sidelines. First time since 97 you've returned since Stillwater. How's it feel to be back at homecoming? Oh, it feels real good to be back. Uh, now that I'm retired, I can start spending a little bit more time here in, in Stillwater and helping this program get back to where it was when I played here. And what would you tell the guys last night? Whatever you told them, they've listened because they're playing well this <laughs> afternoon. Well, I wanted to make sure that, hey, just because you beat Nebraska two weeks ago, it's a good Texas A&M team that's coming in here, and uh, they got a winning record. So if you can go out and beat them, you know, you'll prove your point that you are a team to be reckoned with. Now you were busy uh, this morning, uh, 30, Marshall, at the uh, homecoming parade. How was that experience for you? It was great. You know, I had my wife and my four kids, and we really enjoyed it. Got to meet some people, and, uh, uh, you know, it was a little raining and cold, but, uh, you know, we got through it. Uh, it was just great to see the people out there acknowledging that, you know, they were happy to see me back, uh, back here in Stillwater. Now, how are you keeping busy these days? Well, I own an investment company back in uh, Houston, Texas, and I own a, also a company in Buffalo, New York, that helps high school, college, and professional athletes with their leadership skills, you know, gambling and, and their performance anxiety and things like that. So it's turning out well for us. Thanks, Thurman. Welcome back. All right. Thank you. Guys, just one of three jerseys retired here at Oklahoma State along with Leslie O'Neill and Barry Sanders. Thanks, Zach, and thanks to Thurman for spending some time with us. Zach Fields had his jersey nearly pulled off of him this time as Ty Warren, Gary kept mentioning, had to play. A flag thrown here. He made a big play. Yeah, Ty Warren and Jasmine getting in the backfield. Disregard. Yeah, big tie war number 94 here on the left side of the line. He's going to come, going to work to the outside, watch him, going to try to cut him. He just keeps working, gets up the field, and quarterback can't throw the ball. Josh Fields says everyone's covered. It's what's called a kind of a continuation sack. The man's blocked, but he gets up and keeps working. That's just aggressive attitude. Just continue to work for the quarterback. 
Loses seven yards on the play. Makes it third and 17. Aggies needing a hold here to get the ball back in good field position again. Pokes with 9-12 to go in the third quarter. Bell in the backfield behind Fields. Play action. Fields. Going to tuck it. Nope, he tossed it. And complete to Lewis. And a flag thrown back on the 20-yard line. Yeah, we're going to have a holding penalty here back in the backfield. Josh Fields has to run out of the pocket because the defense is coming after him, and they're taking down Linus Smith, number 88, for the Aggies, who's had a pretty good rush work in there. CRC says, yeah, take the penalty. Offense, 10 yards, previous spot. Replay, third down. Sars, he's Slocum, of course the Aggies, 98, Big 12 South champs and Big 12 champs. The Texas A&M did what they need to come out this second half, Bill. They stopped Oklahoma State in their first series, three downs and out. Then the offense took it down and put three Side points on the board. Way. Oklahoma State, players move back, please. Thank you. Fields getting the signals and ready to go. So it'll be third and 27 from the 17 yard line. And Woods goes wide to the top of your screen. TD Bryant in the slot and then Lewis on the right side. Bell beside Fields in the shotgun. Fields brought down and Texas A&M comes up with a strong defensive series as Webb there to make the play. Randall Webb, the linebacker, steps up inside, and he's going to make the play here on the quarterback, Josh Fields. Look at all the coverage downfield. Everyone's taken away. You've got one taken here, one here, and one here. Josh Fields has nowhere to throw the ball to, so he steps up into the pocket. That's just a coverage sack for Texas A&M. High punt by Farden. Aggies let it bounce, and it takes an OSU roll down to the 33-yard line. We'll take a brief timeout with 8.06 to go in the third, following that 50 yard punt, 28 17. For Texas AM trailing 28 17. OSU stopped on its first two series of this half. They were stopped on their first two series of the ball game. And AM scored first and led 7 0. AM has scored first here with a field goal. Now their second series. Let's see how the Cowboys do with their defense with 8.06 to go in the third. First and 10 at the 33. Long hands off to Weber. Weber, hard run to the 35-yard line. We've been tracking the Suzuki Heisman watch for you. Last week, we showed you Big 12 candidates. This week, we expanded some. But that name at the top, and say that check at the bottom, Chris Brown leading the nation in rushing in Colorado. And he'll have a chance to showcase his talents later today as they play Oklahoma. Next week, we'll have him on Fox Sports Net with Missouri in Columbia, 12.30 Eastern. Yeah, pretty good matchup there. See Chris Brown again next week. He gets to go again this afternoon. Yeah, keep racking up those numbers, I think, Bill. And on a kind of like Gary Barnett's uh, attitude, that his performance and our performance will give him every opportunity. I don't need to send out postcards. I don't need to buy billboards in New York City. Fumble and recovered by a and Trouble on the snap that time by Long and his center, Hangardner. Yeah, just Dustin Long just doesn't grab it. Ball goes to the ground. He gets right on top of it, though. Colorado, Missouri next week. By the way, of course, that's Barnett's uh, alma mater. And Gary uh, Pinkle's doing a nice job there at Missouri. He's so got a very talented quarterback, Brad Smith, that you've certainly seen this year. i got a big one today with Iowa State. Crowd getting into it. Third and nine. Aggies on their own 34. Oklahoma State with a 28-17 lead. Long to pass. Bethel Johnson, big yardage last time, and again, almost a replay, if you will, down to the 45-yard line of OSU, 21 yards on the pickup. It was the exact same play they ran before. Bethel Johnson with the speed on the smash route all the way across the field. You have your two wide receivers going. They run everybody across. Here it is. We've seen this play before. Bethel Johnson getting around the corner and a first down for Texas a and So the Aggies coming up with a big throwing opportunity when they need it. And Long is now 16 of 
or the 17 of 28 for 247 yards and a touchdown. Fields, on the other hand, for OSU is throwing for 166, 13 of 21 and a score. And on the ground, the far side, Weber motors to the 37 yard line. Eight yards in the pickup. Offensive line here starting to take over for Texas A&M. Doing a good job in the running game. The right guard, number 51, Taylor Whitley. Watch him here on the right side. He's going to get a pancake block right there. And Joe Weber's going to run the ball right behind him. Good job there. Right inside. Just keep pushing, keep pushing. That's what you get there, the knockdown. And Joe Weber, the recipient of that good blocking. Second and two at the 37. Weber pushes forward, has the first down and more. Great second effort by Joe Weber. Gary, what kind of an adjustment is it for Joe that he came in with 26 carries for the year? You find out Farmer's out and you're the guy. Well, I think he's been practicing all week, Bill, so he probably had an idea that he might be cast in that role. They tried to get Farmer a chance to play in practice and just didn't have, wasn't able to respond off that shoulder injury. And Weber said, hey, I'll take the ball, not a problem. He's a big guy. He wants to get in there and bang it in between the tackles and you know, make some yardage for Texas A&M. They've got to get the running game going. They've done that here early in the second half. He's got 13 carries today, half as many as he had for the season coming in. He's picked up 41 yards. First and 10 at the 32 for Texas A&M. And flags will bring it to a halt as did not get it off in time. And that's something you really don't want to have happen to you. You got momentum going your way. Your offense is moving the football. Now you're going to line up at first and 15. Yeah, the Aggies got the field goal in the last time, but marching here, they're sitting in that range now at the 37. They need another 10 or 15 yards of the field goal, but they're thinking touchdowns. They want the, the one to pull them back right in the thick of this thing. Down 11. 458 ticking in the third quarter. First and 15. Weber. And Weber gets it all back and the first down. He may be a yard shy. Let's see where they spot the football near the 17 yard line or the 22 yard line. And well, you got the draw play here. Deep eye back. Going to try to get the first down here. Joe Weber gets inside, but. You know, sometimes people get in your way and they're not supposed to get in your way. Watch the umpire and the white stripes there. Take a look. Uh oh, oh, I'm going right. You go left. <laughs> Joe Weber just gets around him, makes a big play. Tell that umpire, turn around and be my lead blocker. <laughs> Send me a good screen. The game winner coming with 19 seconds. Head coach Karen Hancock and the Cowboys claim their first bet on the measurement. And will go to the Big 12 tournament for the first time ever this week. And going to be just short. Yeah, three or four inches there, Bill. yards on the pickup for Weber. Weber's best day at 13 carries against Louisiana Tech for 47 yards and a touchdown. He's now 14 for 55, so he's taking care of that. Last year, ran for 117 yards in the season, but he had six touchdowns. He's got one today as well. So second and less than one, as you saw. Completed the five and Johnson into the end zone. Touchdown Aggies. <laughs> Bethel Johnson with a TD reception and the Aggies have marched right back into this one. 28-23 pending the PAT. 23 yards on the play. We talked about Dustin Long coming out here to begin the second half, throwing the football. Chance to come back in this game. Certainly an opportunity for Texas A&M to get into it. And they're right back in it, knocking at the door here, Bill. First two possessions. Scores on both. And a timeout now for Texas A&M. We'll take a brief one as well. Stay with us. Cowboys 28, Texas A&M 23.
Welcome back with a 28-23 in Texas A&M taking the timeout to go for two and to decide what play they would run. Critical part in the game, even though there's 420 to go in the third quarter. We've got about it here. A chance to get within a field goal, get the two points on the board instead of going for the one. So they line it up. Weber, the running back, long to throw. Porter, the catch. He is denied getting into the end zone. Great play by Elbert Craig, number three, coming back and making a tackle on a big tight end. Greg Porter had to step in front of him, but good speed coming to the ball. Elbert Craig stopped him from getting in the end zone. And the Cowboys maintain the five-point edge now. Well, Bevel Johnson, I tell you, he's shown up today, Bill. Big day receiving the ball. Dustin Long says, hey, I don't have to throw it deep to make big plays. Bethel Johnson's taking care of that. Running the football after the catch. The bootleg pass here. You see Long finding Johnson, who goes into the end zone, just makes a nice cut inside here, and Speedy goes into the end zone. But on the play, he banged his left knee on the turf inside, and they had to check him on the sideline. He is walking around, looked like he's okay. Take a look here, the bootleg pass. He's the second level receiver. See, number one, here's number two, the second level, as I talk about. Bethel Johnson making a nice play, and Dustin Long finding the open guy. Now, in the two point conversion, it's Porter all the way. You know, looks like he's going to get there easily, but Elbert Craig, a big tackle. That's a great job coming downhill, making a play, and making a forceful tackle, stopping Greg Porter from getting in the end zone. Let's go down to Zach, find out more about Bethel Johnson. As you said, Gary, they were working on his left knee. They do expect him to return, but the injury bug continues to bite the Aggies A&M. Starting right tackle Andre Brooks is out. Problem with his knee and starting free safety uh, Jackson of Powell. He is out as he re-aggravated his groin. Two starting guys out of the lineup for the rest of the game. But the Aggies showing some gumption here as uh, those that are playing are producing. And they've closed it to a five-point game. OSU's third possession coming up. Bryant dropped it. Bryant hit hard and will be marked at the one and a half yard line. So Oklahoma State in deep trouble here, even though they have the lead. Great job of coverage by Texas A&M, making a play in the kicking game. When you drop a kickoff, I'll tell you, this is what can happen to you. Now you're having to start with inside your own five yard line. Terrence Davis Bryant just loses control of the football and it goes down to the ground. And good job by Texas A&M converging on the football. And now your defense is down there with a chance to stop the Cowboys from coming out and set your offense up with great field position. Ronald Jones in on the play to lead the charge. Concerned Les Miles looks on as his pokes. How about a little character check here. First to ten from the two officially as they line up in the end zone with Tatum Bell. Bell looking for a hole and barely found one to score it out and then lost the football. They're going to call him down, Bill, on the ground. The ball popped out as he hit the ground. Gonna run a little O scheme here, trying to pull the ball, get the Tatum Bell inside there. Take a look here at the end of the play as he goes down. He wraps up and does the ball come out? Yeah, the ball is out actually before it's on the ground and Tatum Bell and Denard was there. Yeah, there's Denard, the fullback, pulls, jumps on top of it. So OSU keeps possession. He gets one yard, second and nine from the three. Let's keep an eye on Woods. We saw them in a situation like this against Texas go to him and this one doesn't get a chance to develop prior to snap full start offense five yards remember the play against Texas Gary the jump ball they threw to Woods about a 25 yarder they really got him out of a big hole in that game yeah, he's a guy you can go to get yourself out of a bad situation Rashawn Woods they've gone gone to him time and time again He's got five receptions today for 47 yards. And you've got to feel confident, though, if you're going to try to throw that kind of a pass, that your offensive line can hold out a rushing defense of Texas A&M. Dr. Mike Gundy, he says, you know, we don't have a lot of time sometimes to throw that football, so that might not be a, a real smart play here in this situation. Second and ten at the two. Denard out of the backfield. You see how quickly uh, Josh Fields got rid of that football. He had two defenders rushing on him with no one blocking them. They little bootleg pass here, and they're going to have Ty Warren, number 94, in his face. And just getting rid of the football quickly. Take a look here. One, two, three steps. He sees Ty Warren right there and going to drop it off to the fullback to get something out of that end zone area. Keel in on the play, and now Oklahoma State third and four at the eight-yard line. Woods wide to the left to the top of the screen. Lewis 
on the flank on the right. Play action, Lewis on the handoff on the reverse. Lewis in trouble, and he's brought down near the eight yard line. Oklahoma State will have to kick it away. Great job of the Yankees staying home on the play. Davis made the tackle. Sammy Davis stayed at home, did exactly what he needed to do on that play. Everyone takes care of their responsibilities on defense, and you have a chance to make a play, and Sammy Davis does here on the reverse to Lewis. And now, Cole Farden backed up in the end zone. Bethel Johnson stands at midfield by himself. From the 39, Johnson. Nearly breaks to about three tackles at once at the 40. An excellent return, and it'll be great field position following a 53-yard punt and a 21-yard return from Johnson. College Football Saturday presented by Kyocera returns to Fox Sports Net tonight. Big 12 showdown. Dave Lapham up there with our buddy Joel Myers and Jim Knox. Seventh-ranked Texas travels to Lincoln to take on the Cornhuskers. Coverage begins tonight at 7 Eastern, 4 Pacific, right here on Fox Sports Net. Well, special teams playing a factor here in this football game here for Texas A&M. Oklahoma State drops the kickoff return and could start inside their end zone. They can't get out. Take a look at what's happened here in this football game. It's, it's been all game. Aggies, huh? They've dominated here in the second half. 139 to go in the quarter. And Weber, who's had a resurgence. They kept him in check, but he has made some very tough, good runs here in the second half. And all the momentum has swung to Texas A&M. Well, kind of like two weeks ago, Number seven, Tatum Bell had to respond for Oklahoma State because he had injuries at the tailback position. And he got in there and got a lot of carries, and you're seeing Joe Weber have a chance to run the ball quite a bit today, and he's not he's not disappointing R.C. Slocum and the Texas A&M football team. Picked up five on that first down carry. Second and five at the 35 of Oklahoma State. Hank is down five, but marching again. Weber. Spins and is dropped at the 31-yard line. Vernick Grant made the tackle. It'll be third and one coming up here. Well, Joe, Wop Joe Weber was wanting to have some contact at the end of this play, but uh, the defender goes low on him. Watch the offensive line just pushing here, doing a good job, getting hat on hat and keep working. Let your backs read the hole. Watch what I'm talking about. Joe is trying to lower the shoulder, but he spins. Grant making the low tackle and stopped him short. It's going to be bring up a third and short. We've got a cowboy down, Bill. Antonio Smith, sophomore from Oklahoma City out of Marshall High School, is the injured player. That's good. Pops up. Looks like he's got his wind knocked out of him. He's going to pop up and be okay. One coming up with 46 seconds to go in the third quarter. And Smith helped off. Cowboys making their defensive adjustments as the Aggies will line up with Joseph in there. 39, 38 seconds remaining now in the period. The clock moving. Penetration by Oklahoma State on defense, Bill. Looks like they're going to stop short here the first down. You see Richmond leading the way. Richmond off the left defensive end spot into the backfield along with other, other defenders there for, for uh, Oklahoma State. So, R.C. Slocum. Well, he's down a touchdown. He's got good field position. They're going to call a timeout here. I think to take a look at the end of the quarter, though, Bill. Yeah, end of the third quarter, so they get a chance to think about it. It's like a free timeout in a key position. With our score, Texas A&M on the short side, OSU 28-23. You're watching the Dr. Pepper Big 12 Game of the Week on Fox Sports Now. Welcome back, 28-23 as we go to the fourth. Bill Land and Gary Reasons with you. Boy, the Aggies have turned this one around. It's all about momentum football is. R.C. Slocum's football team has played very well in the third quarter, Bill. Got a key fourth down situation here, electing to go offensively, try to get that first down. Dustin Long under center trying to 
Make something happen here. And Long throws it incomplete. Oklahoma State will take over. Huge play in this football game. R.C. Slocum electing to try to get a play here on fourth down, on fourth and short. Cowboys, good job defensively. The ball was just a little bit underthrown. And the fullback could not come up with a catch. Good job that time. And the defense recognizing the situation, playing the play action pass, and stopping Texas A&M on a fourth and one. Joseph just couldn't quite come up with it. And you see Long going, oh, thought we had that one. So Oklahoma State gets it back. But A&M's got a feel. Their defense has been playing well. If they can answer the bell here again as it pitches to Tatum, they'll be in good shape. Bell gets a couple here, and now our Dr. Pepper game break. Let's go to Bill Jones with more college football. Hill 1 in 7. Rutgers trying to pull off the upset of the year. Led 17 14 over number one Miami early fourth quarter, but Miami's Ken Dorsey on fourth and goal to Kellen Winslow Jr., an 11 point lead for Miami 28 17. Bill? You can see Kellen Sr. chin down out in the Fox Sports Net Studios out in Los Angeles. <laughs> that would be a big one. No Whoa. doubt about that. We'll show you later. There are eight unbeaten entering today, and Miami look like they're going to avoid lighting well, the dust. Tatum Bell bringing himself out of the football game here, the tailback here for Oklahoma State. Second and eight. Jones in the game to replace him. Fields to throw it. Incomplete. Denard. The intended receiver. Josh Fields did a good job of buying some time there to let Denard get some space between him and the defender. The defender was close to him and had a chance to rush Fields. And it's a pretty good throw that time. Denard's got to make the catch. But I think it's an important thing here. Got Bell on the sideline here for the Cowboys and looked like on, on that first down play. Might have dinged his left shoulder just a little bit there. Yeah, all three of their key running backs were fighting ankle injuries earlier this year. Bell, of course, Seymour Shaw, who had, had 367 yards rushing, and then uh, Morency, the, the freshman. Well, Morency is back, but he is a different type of runner, and they're giving Jones a pop today. It is third and eight at the 35. Jones in the game. And the completion, Lewis. Has the first down. Great job by Josh Fields throwing the quick slant blast to Lewis on the outside. And the first first down of the half for Oklahoma State here. Well, what you read here, quarterback's gonna have good time, good play action pass, just zip it in there between the coverage. Good job by Lewis running after the catch and making something happen. A lot of weapons here for Oklahoma State. We haven't talked a lot about Rashawn Woods today. There's been other players ringing the bell here for the Cowboys. First to 10 of the 47. Play action to Jones. Fields. Woods. And out of bounds. Woods another first down. As Byron Jones covering on the play. Just as we talk about him, who steps into the picture but 82, Rashawn Woods. Young man, you have to give him respect here. Look at the cushion on the separation there. Look at the change of pace there and the gear change. And defense for Texas A&M, they're, they're just allowing him to have some space because they don't want him to get behind and make a huge play, Bill. Yeah, yeah your you know, coaches talk about thoroughbreds. What he did look like he's kind of galloping along, that he brings it up a little bit. He can really change that speed on you. They don't talk about blazing speed with him, but what a tempo he has. First and 10 of the 36. Jones. Hit hard and brought down. No gain, it appears. Another change up formation. Mike Gundy going with the unbalanced line again. Taking his strength right here to the to the near side. Gamble, Greg, the middle linebacker, doing a good job stepping in there and making a tackle. Greg Jones, a sophomore from Carrollton, Texas, out of Newman Smith High School in the Dallas Fort Worth area. And had one carry coming in for four yards. So this shows you where Cowboys there wanting to get him into the game, get him a little feel but not put him in a critical situation right away. Second and 10 at the 36 now. 13.02 to go. Jones covering up with the football and then tugs forward for a couple more and gets down near the 31 yard line. Yeah, the, a the Aggies are trying to pull that football out, running through there in traffic and Jones got to hang on to it. Doesn't have a lot of playing experience, Bill, but they're having a chance to do something here with Tatum Bell out of the football game. Now Lewis and Terrence Davis Bryant check back in. Woods will go to the top of your screen with 
T.D. Bryant inside. Jones is the tailback. Lewis split wide left. Third and six. Field short drop. Overthrown and fourth down coming up for the Cowboys. Surprising, Josh Fields is locked right on T.D. Bryant. He just he looked at him, he was in the slant in the slot and runs a little slant and said he was covered immediately, but Josh Fields stayed on him and Les Miles talking to him as he comes off the sideline. You gotta read the field, read the progression. I think he just picked that one out and said, hey, this is what I can get it to and he didn't get it done. All right, this one will be a 49-yard field goal attempt. It was it's the longest if he's successful for Phillips in his history as he got the leg and it is no good. So the Cowboys miss on the field goal opportunity. Remember at the end of the half, they had the muff on the attempted field goal and then they miss here. They still lead it. 28-23, 12-11 remaining in our football game. Twenty-eight, twenty-three. Homecoming in Oklahoma State. The Cowboys led earlier, twenty-eight, fourteen at intermission. It's been all Aggies second half. Finally, OSU moving the football here, missing on the forty-nine-yard field goal attempt. I correct myself. That Phillips did hit a fifty-two-yarder last year. That was in the Oklahoma game. Both teams have missed in some kicking opportunities as the special teams are figuring in, but there's not been a positive way. First at 10 and the pass to Johnson. Johnson tripped up near the sideline. And let's go to Zach Klein with more on Tatum Bell. Bell was a right shoulder stinger. I asked him, will you be back in the game? He says, no doubt about it. I won't miss it. So he will be back. Just a right shoulder stinger. Expect him next series in. All right, you see Woods back there as uh, the Cowboys tending to the wounded. Of course, you think of Bell, and last week Mike Gundy was telling us what time, Gary, the Bell started to come out, and Mike put his hand up. <laughs> he said, somebody tell him down there, he needs to go back here, but we don't have a sub right now. He did, he said he is learning to become tougher and that you play the whole game. And you see Bell's making the transformation. Now, on the other side, look at the effort by Weber. As Weber, tugging and pulling, and Richmond finally pulls him down. You just got to fly to the ball, Oklahoma State does. They've got to make plays. They've got to stop this running game. Texas a and doing a good job on the ground, pounding, getting a few yards. And they've been manageable situations. Third and medium here, third and four yards, Bill. Oklahoma State, three and four. Goal of getting six wins and going to a bowl game this year. They had the surprise against Nebraska that made up for the mistake against Louisiana Tech. They figured this is their best shot if they're going to get a back-to-back -back quality win and set the table for that bowl run. On third and four. Pressure and the ball thrown up and knocked away. No flag. Incomplete at the 45 yard line as Williams was all over Dustin Long and forced that difficult throw, and it's a fourth down. Good stop by the Cowboys, and I'll tell you, Dustin Long was lucky on this throw. He throws it up there trying to make a play, but this is one he really shouldn't throw like this because the defense has two players there, and he has a chance to get this ball picked off. Look at the end of the play here. you got two Cowboys there right on top of it. Ball is on the sideline, though. Oklahoma State should get the football here. Fourth and four at the 38. High snap, not much of a rush though, and skates, he kicks it away. Bryant stays away from it, rolls out of bounds. Let's take a look at our game, our game summary here as Oklahoma State and Texas A&M with Bell, 115 yards rushing and three touchdowns. Those three TDs all first half though. Johnson and Porter, big days in the receiving end. OSU, look at the yardage difference, first half to second half. And OSU scoring on four straight possessions earlier. Hey, look at Bethel Johnson here in the second half, showing the speed on the smash right under the linebackers, making play after play just like this for Texas A&M today. Just showing his speed. Good job, good call that time. Uh, Texas A&M trying to get the ball to this speedy receiver, and he's shown he can do it both sides of the field as well. Johnson six for 107 yards today, having a great day. Lindsay comes to the bell, comes back in the ball game and runs it. Lindsay leading the way with the right receiver block. Well, Texas A&M defense, Bill, they have been superlative over the years. And coming into this football game, there had only been one back rush for over 100 yards against them. That was last week where Nebraska's Jamal Lord got over 100 yards. And Tatum Bell, the second back, 
to do that, take a look here prior to last week, 20 straight games. That's impressive for a defense to not allow one single back to surpass that 100 yard mark. And now Texas a and defense has had that happen to them twice in a row. Second down and five at the 29. Fields going deep. Looking for Woods. You know, the other thing, Gary, this is the quarter that AM has struggled defensively. And they gave up the big lead that they had against the 17 point lead against Nebraska. And of course, Texas Tech was down 18. Both those games were in College Station. I think that's what makes it even more astonishing. Be interesting to see here if Texas AM can hold up because it's a little bit of a, a weary defense after that first half. They were superlative in the third quarter. Third and five of the 29. Bell in the backfield. Fields. And there's the hole in that. Yep. And there's the flag. Trying to get it to Lindsey. And Weston was covering. Well, Weston was covering just a little bit too much there. Just going to have too much hand work on the receiver as he's trying to get away, get Pass down the field. Defense, spot foul. First down. He's going to be in the slot here. Weston's going to have coverage and going to come right here and going to try to get, get coverage right there on him. Watch him hold. I'm trying to clear this thing. There you go. And impedes his progress. The official throwing the flag. First down, new set of downs at the 39 of OSU. 9.47 remaining in the football game. Cowboys by five. Gets to the 45-yard line. Remember the OSU game plan as we talked in the early moments of this game. Let's follow up on it, Gary. Well, we talked about momentum. They've done that. 28 first-half points. That's superlative and corral the Aggies. AM only two. They've got 200-yard receivers, but nothing really on the ground. And stay balanced. Play selection. Take a look here. 31 runs, 28 passes. That's what Mike Gundy would like to have for his offense. And Bell, who is a guy out of DeSoto, Texas, south part of Dallas, who was recruited by R.C. Slocum at Texas A&M. Of course, DeSoto produced Byron Hanspar, the first Big 12 rushing champion back in 96 at Texas Tech. And Bell doing DeSoto proud as he pounds it to the 45. He's been a big surprise here for Tech for Oklahoma State running the football. This young man has done a good job. And he's getting the work. You know, it's a cool day out there. Should be able to run quite a bit. Really doesn't bother him. There's no heat to affect him running the football. And going to give it to him time and time again. Good line play up front. You see your fullback blocking through Denard. Take a look on the right side. Good job of blocking there. That's Chris Aiken, the right guard, getting a chance to play in there. Oklahoma State's moving the ball effectively now, Bill. Well, their coaches have been challenging them and telling them that hey, you got to play with a sense of urgency. And there's come a point in the game when you've got an answer. And they they have to answer to AM after AM taking control. Bell again breaks one to the 38 yard line. As Tatum Bell brought down by Keelan Jackson, seven yards that time for Bell. That's that pitch back to the tailback they showed in the first half, and that ball went through. Tatum Bell runs through there. Pretty hard hitting out there. It's a physical football game. This Texas A&M defense likes to be physical, and Oklahoma State offensively, their line, not the most physical bunch, but they're trying to play more physical each time they're out there. OSU breaks from the huddle quickly. Fields on second and three. First down inside the 25-yard line, Woods. Weston beaten on the play. They got them a little bit off balance there, Gary, when they broke out of the huddle before a &M had their defense close to being set. Well, they had a little misdirection here. They knew they had Rashawn Woods with the chance to catch the ball. You got him running the ball, run the ball, then you can do the play action pass on the bootleg here, and Rashawn Woods breaks it down and goes to the outside. Good play fake in there on that play. 14 yards, and the Cowboys now with 8.06 to go. First and 10 at the 23 yard line. And Woods, six receptions for 64 yards. I think that's seven for 78 as we had that last one. First and 10 at the 23. Jones gets the call, flag is thrown, picks up a yard or two. It's Greg Jones spelling bell here, and Jasmine making the tackle. And yeah, when the line judge throws it, usually it's going to be infraction by the defense offsides. That's exactly what we have. And bell comes back in for Jones. And the defense comes. Offside, defense, five yards, replay first down. I'm just trying to get a head start there defensively. And 
and six steps into the neutral zone. He was pinned right on the outside. So a first and five for the Cowboys. And they're at the 18 yard line of the Aggies, leading by five. Fields, Bell, and Bell, no game. Now, there's the same play they had against Nebraska where Bell took it the distance around the corner. We showed that replay earlier in the football game. Tatum Bell in the misdirection, fake inside, then pitch it to your tailback coming around. Good, good recognition there that time by Texas A&M's defense. Penwright with the stop. The Aggies feeling they need to force a field goal here, Gary. Three makes it an eight-point game, and you're still a, a one-score game of sending it in overtime, even though there's still plenty of time at the moment. And the Aggies, remember, have used one of their timeouts. Seven minutes to go. Second and five now. Fields in trouble. Unloads. Badgema crossing over. And Penwright again pressured and makes it third and five. A well, big play here. You don't want to get anything lost, any losses on this play. Josh Fields, at quarterback, has got to be smart with the football. You're definitely in field goal range. Your kicker's showing he's got the leg to, to kick it this distance. Don't want to have anything, anything bad happen to you, a sack and push him back. You'd like to get the first down and keep the chains moving, but be smart with the football. Bell in the lineup, third and five from the 18. Fields, going to throw it. And got hit just as he threw it from behind. And let's go down to Zach Klein as they set up for the field goal. Yeah, Bill, it's the rain is starting to fall much harder than it was earlier in the game. And I asked Luke Phillips as he was worried about his foot, and he said yes. On his last field goal attempt that he missed, his left foot, his planting foot, slipped. He said he's trying to uh, make sure he can plant his left foot more solidly as he tries to attempt this field goal. Last one was a 49-yarder. Let's see how it affects him here as he sets up 35 yards away. Pretty much of a straight shot, slight to the angle on the left, and is holding again. High snap, blocked, and AM is held again. And the Cowboys quickly make the tackle on the play. But Texas AM comes up with the block. Boy, they got the best of the scenarios here. No points allowed, and a chance was 641 to take over down five. And you got a guy inside like number 94, Ty Warren. He can break through the other offensive line and, and block a kick. He's going to come through here and pressure and just watch the big guy, number 94, just force his way through three guys and block that kick. Luke Phillips, I think, kicked the ball low. Nonetheless, Ty Warren, big play here for Texas AM. So yeah, special teams are a factor, but not in the positive note that we thought they might be. A positive for AM, but not on the offensive end. So 6.41 to go. Aggies get the football. Yeah, they're gonna set the ball a different spot, Bill. Taking out the 14-yard line. Let's take a look at Ty Warren on the sideline. Haven't been a lot of plays in the last few weeks for these Aggies defensively because of an injury, but a chance to play here today. I don't think he's 100% on that ankle, but obviously happy about that big play there on the, on the field goal. So when they set this one up, and there still seems to be some indecision here as to where this football is going to be spotted. Well, if the ball was blocked behind the line of scrimmage, Bill, and it crosses the line of scrimmage, then it goes to the original spot where the ball was kicked from if, if the Texas A&M doesn't return it. But if it's blocked behind the line of scrimmage, either team can advance the football. That's the rule. Let's take a look here at Phillips. Good job that time by Cox getting it down, and you see Warren come through there. Let's see what happens to the football at the end. And get on at about the 13-yard line, 14-yard line, which is where they're going to stop it here. First, it's called illegal touching, and that's where they get the ball first. At the 14, Long calling it out. Goins, a pullback, play action. Dustin Long now tucks it under. He's hit hard. Got a couple, though, to the 17. It'll be second down and seven after the three-yard pickup. I don't know why offenses do this. One-man route. Trying to get it to Bethel Johnson. I know he's had a spectacular day, but only one place to go with the ball with Dustin Long. Everyone else is in there blocking. Pretty good job of uh, 
Oklahoma State corralling Dustin Long. They've only got one guy out on the on the pass route. That makes it difficult for your quarterback to complete that pass. Richmond made the tackle there. Second and seven is Bethel Johnson. Sets up to the right, bottom of your screen. Trips to the top of your screen as Long. Looking for Johnson crossing over again, and they misconnect. That's been a successful play for Texas A&M today. And let's take a look at what Texas A&M has done. We talked about the game plan at the top of the show. Keep it long and short. We'll throw the football. Well, Dustin Long has done, done that. And the defense, and then 28 first half points. They weren't playing very well then. They played better in the second half and kicked the habit. Well, Peckham's done, done his job on PATs. He's two of two today. The homecoming crowd has been sitting in a drizzle all day and temperatures in the high 30s, low 40s. Their Cowboys lead at 28 23. But AM, third and seven from its own 17. Long. Completes it short of the first down to Taylor. And they have held. Good tackle that time by the defense. That's Vernon Grant coming up, making a good tackle on Taylor. Catches him low below the knee, and Taylor in obvious pain. Yep, slow to get up. And Vernon Grant. Wasn't high on the depth chart the last couple of weeks. He's getting a chance to play today and made a few tackles, Bill. You've called his name several times. Take a look on the right side of your screen. She's on the left side. Dustin Long's going to toss the ball out there to him and try to make a first down, let him run after the catch. But see the hit there by Grant. Does a nice job stopping A&M from the first down. And holding his knee. We'll take a timeout. We'll be back. Cowboys trying to hang on to a 28-23 lead. Dr. Pepper, Big 12 game of the week. Oklahoma State 28, AM 23 with 5.44 to go, and Taylor being attended to on the Aggie sideline. Coming up tomorrow night on Fox Sports Net, the WBC Continental America's Light Heavyweight Championship will be coming your direction. More on that in just a moment. First of all, the punt by Skates. Across the 50, the 45, and Oklahoma State is going to get it back at the 35 yard line with 5.32 remaining. All right, more on the boxing match we're talking about as Montel Griffin defends his title. Griffin, 32, says he's in the best shape of his life. He goes against up and comer, the challenger, George Khalid Jones. Griffin, the former world WBC light heavyweight champ, the only boxer to defeat Roy Jones Jr. That's tomorrow night at six o'clock local time, 6 p.m. local time here on Fox Sports Net. Bill, if the Cowboys want to score a knockout of their own, they're going to have to get some points on the board here on this drive. If they do that, it's going to put Texas A&M against, put their backs against the wall. They have to put two scores up on the board to win this football game. First and 10 at the 35. Bell and Denard in the backfield. Fields. Throws it up and intended for Woods, diving on the sideline, trying to knock it away. And let's go to Zach Klein. Yeah, Bill, an injury update on Jamar Taylor, the wide receiver for Texas A&M. He has a left knee, a knee sprain. He is doubtful to return. All right, Taylor, a guy that uh, they've counted on throughout the year, came in with 37 catches and 671 yards and leaders in both of those categories. Second and 10, Badgema in motion. Nowhere this time. So, two plays for nothing, and now third and ten. And AM is a play away from getting the ball back here. Good job up front by Marcus Jasmine, number 91, the nose tackle, just pushing and allowing the linebackers to flow in there nicely, and Randall Webb stepping up tonight and making a tackle. Take a look at what uh, Texas A&M has done this year in the fourth quarter, Bill. Not great. They've allowed 82 points and only scored 67 to their opponents. Some big things happened to them, obviously, last week against Nebraska. Yeah, they've given up 62% of their point total allowed in the fourth quarter. Fields. Looking for Lewis. And they'll have to punt it away. Executive producer of college football Saturday is Bill Borson. Coordinating producers are Roy Hamilton and Gary Garcia. Today's game produced by Bob Steinfeld and directed by Ken Miller. Senior VP of Field Operations is Andrea Berry. Ken Miller, who won the Fox Sportsnet Bolathon last night, by the way, in beautiful Perry, Oklahoma. 
give him his just due. Entire crew there. Fourth and 11 from the 34 with 4.42 to go. And Fart takes the snap. Low kick. Johnson will stay away from it. And the Aggies will get it on their own 22-yard line with four minutes and 30 seconds to work with after a 44-yard punt. Cowboys 28, Ags 23. The Dr. Pepper Big 12 Football Game of the Week on Fox Sports Net has been brought to you by Dr. Pepper and your local Dr. Pepper bottler and Sonic, where chili makes it better. No, that's not some graphics magic on that tree, ladies and gentlemen. Uh, they're serious here at OSU in homecoming. Well, the Cowboys jumped out to a 28-14 halftime lead. They have been stymied in the second half, and the Aggies first and 10 on their own, 22, down five, 4.28 to go, and long to throw. Incomplete. Well, Gary, we were just talking in between. They're looking for Porter, thought particularly with Taylor out, Greg Porter's going to be a key man, I would guess. Definitely. He's, he's done well in this football game. He's got to find a, a way to get open. Good job of time by Paul Duran, the linebacker, getting in front of him, allowing, not allowing him to make the catch. And Porter in the slot here, and Duran, number 12, is going to be the linebacker. He's going to get underneath that right there and not going to allow him to catch the football. Porter today with six catches, 113 yards. Long is thrown for 279 yards. He's hit on 20 of 35. Second and 10 from the 22. Nearly picked off. It came off the back of Grant as he was rolling to the field. Freshman from Duncanville in on the play again. It's going to be real important for the defensive line for Oklahoma State to, to pass rush here effectively against his quarterback, and that means Kevin Williams and company. They're going to have to do a good job of getting in the face of the quarterback. They're probably going to do with just four rushers, Bill, because I think they want to sell out in coverage here. They've got to change it up defensively, but the front four, they're going to have to do something here to answer this call. Williams and Kareem Smith set up on the left side defensively on a third and 10, ball on the 22. Long. Porter, big time catch, short of the first down at the 31 yard line. Oh, well, we'll see. They may get him a favorable spot. He had to come back a little bit to catch the football. Milligan makes the tackle. He's going to get it to the 31 and a half yard line on this play. We'll bring him out to measure. Greg Porter's a big, you know, big target. You know, 6'5", tight end. Throw him the football. Make, let him make a play. You can just take a look here. He's in the slot. He's the number two receiver and just works back to the quarterback. See the void area? Good job that time. Using his body going up and a good tackle by Milligan. Stop him just short, I think, of the first down, Bill. Hey, another huge day in college football. We'll keep you track of it all here on Fox Sports Net. You see the distance there. Following today's game, many of our Fox Sports Net regions, it's the Big 12 postgame report with Bill Jones and Spike Dykes. They'll have up-to-the-minute scores and highlights from around the country and nation. That's the Big 12 postgame report immediately following our game. Check your local listings. Again, don't forget, later on tonight, Texas and Nebraska from the Big 12 in Lincoln, 6 o'clock Central Time on Fox Sports Net. Timeout A&M with a fourth and yard. And we'll take a break. R.C. Slocum takes it over, down five. Stay with us. As we get ready here with a 28-23 and 3.56 to go, again, we want to remind you, College Football Saturday presented by Kiyosara returns to Fox Sports Net tonight. Big 12 showdown in Lincoln, seventh-ranked Texas against the Nebraska Cornhuskers. Coverage begins at 7 o'clock Eastern, 4 Pacific, right here on Fox Sports Net. Fourth and one, Aggies going for it to 31. Long to throw, incomplete. Flag is thrown, Johnson the intended receiver and they'll get the interference call. Vernon Grant was covering, draping himself on Johnson. Last time here on fourth and one, Texas A&M decided to throw the football. They do the same thing. Do the same thing again here and unfortunately Grant's gonna get called for the pass interference penalty for the Cowboys. Good job of making the play, but you're draped all over the, of the back up here. You can see him take on the inside move. Grant's on the bottom of the screen. He's just got too much contact on the receiver. See Dustin Long. He says, yeah, there's a flag. That's a good call. Sophomore from Port Natchez, Texas, having quite a day, trying to lead his team from behind. 
3.52 to go, first and 10 of the 36. Joseph ran off without the football. Boy, and he had an opportunity to get something going there. And no doubt about it, had some room to move, and the Cowboys doing a good job converting, converging there. So, I remember here too, Gary, A&M just one timeout remaining, so they've really got to be prudent with their time. And the ball at the 36. Long out of the shotgun, second and 10. Long. Brown chasing him. Dumps it off, nearly picked off by Grant. My goodness. Grant deflected as Thomas, I believe, will be called for defensive pass interference. No, maybe offensive, Bill. I think they're gonna they're gonna say the I mean, offensive, there was yeah. holding. Yeah, he was holding the defender and because he knew that he was gonna have a chance to get that ball. This is a tough throw by Dustin Long. He's going to his left. And I, you know, I tell you, I haven't seen a quarterback having to try to toss one back like this before. He's trying to do a little dump pass. Try to get out of some trouble, and this is one that uh, probably shouldn't throw. You should throw it out of bounds. Just go ahead and sack up and get you another down on third down. But now there's going to be a – that was a big play for, for the Cowboys defensively. All right. We'll take a look here as they talk it over. Cowboys got to decide if they want to take this or not, Gary. You give them another down? I'm not, did you, was there a or, flag definitely on the play? There was definitely a flag. Is that yes. what they're – Okay, they Maybe they're deciding if they're going to pick it up. Yeah, I don't know. Now they're talking to Oklahoma State, so it's okay. going to be against Texas A&M. It's going to be offensive pass interference on the outside. You've got the quarterback outside of the pocket. He's holding the ball did not cross the line of scrimmage. Holding on the offense, 10 yards, replay, second down. Okay. Second and 20 now. You see Dustin Long all the way to the left side. Now watch him turn his body all the way back. Now he's trying to throw it back inside like a little dart pass. You see the takedown there behind the line of scrimmage, and I'm trying to find it there. And you can see Grant get in front of the receiver. And he just takes it down, pulls him by the hand. That's kind of a questionable call, but nonetheless, it's going to be second and long situation. Second and 20 at the 26. I, I don't understand that call, to be honest with you, folks. Should have been a non-call, Bill. Yeah, long, throws it, got it back. At least the 10 yards, a leaping grab by Porter. And not a lot of authority on that football. Dustin Long throwing it up there. He knows his big wide receiver slash tight end. Greg Porter can make a play. And just four-man rush here for the Cowboys, trying to get some pressure. You see the spin moves by Richmond on the outside, and Porter comes down with the football. Gets some of the yardage back there. Brings yeah. up a third and eight now, Bill. So he got 12. So instead of third and 10, it was going to be third and eight. So the Aggies. So got a good shot here with 3.02 and counting at the 38 of Oklahoma State. Cowboys with a 28-23 lead. Long. Porter again. Porter across midfield of the 45, and that'll move the chains again. Milligan makes the tackle. Just cannot say enough about Greg Porter. 20 yards on that pickup. What a player this fella is. Where does he catch the ball, Bill? He catches it inside the stripes here. Take a look at Greg Porter comes inside here. I like it when offenses decide to throw the ball in the middle because a lot of offenses choose to throw to the sideline because that's the safe throw. If you get a receiver that can catch the ball and he's strong enough to go in there, go ahead and throw it in there. And Texas A&M is finding a way to do that with Greg Porter. And we've seen earlier, if Porter can't catch it, he's going to fight to make sure the other guy doesn't get it. First and 10 at the 42 of the Cowboys. Long in trouble. Got away from one, but he is brought down with a sack on the play at the 45-yard line. Yeah, Kareem Smith pressure from the outside. Forces Dustin Long up into the pocket. Get Brown Brown. Have, yeah, Brown's going to have a chance to get a sack here on this play. Good job of just keep working to the quarterback. And that's a good rush on the outside by Kareem Smith. Take a look here on the right side. He's going to pressure the quarterback, and Long's going to step up. A little underneath move there. Pressure him to step up, and Llewellyn Brown makes a sack. Second and 13, and it is complete inside the 40. Terrence Thomas. Still third down coming up, though, and we'll see where they spot the football about the 39-yard line. Give him seven yards on the play. Clock moving with 1.40 to go. Kareem Smith hit Dustin Long in the back that time. Hit him right in the middle of the back. A lot of pressure on him, and that was a real physical tackle as he threw the football. Third and six at the 38-yard line. 
incomplete again. Thomas, and Thomas brought down for what would appear to be a first down as Robinson and Duran make the tackle. See Thomas going off. Clock still now stopped at 122, but it took a while. Start the clock, that's all right. No, 122 remaining. Here, we apologize for our uh, clock there discrepancy. There's 122 yeah. remaining, and they're going to come out and measure. Is it fourth or is it first? Mm. <laughs> wow, that's close. You talk about spots, right? It, now, now, the last two fourth downs in this situation, Texas A&M has done what? They have thrown the football. So they have a real confidence in their fourth down passing game. And that gives that defense just one more thing to think about, doesn't it? That before you set up to just tee off and load up, the back of your mind. Now what you do defensively, you have to be guard against a big play here on fourth down. They can get the whole score very quickly if you have one little gap up front. Fourth down, and you saw it, inches long. Nothing fancy. It's going to push us forward. You should have it. Yeah, going to depend on the spot here. And it looks like the line judge who's coming up from the near side. You see him here. Got his feet set. Going to be just past that line. Yep, chains are moving. No measurement needed. And now Texas A&M keeps the football. Well, the cl clock is not necessarily Texas A&M's friend right here. They've got to get a score, a touchdown on this drive. Yeah, field goal going to do any good. 113 to go. They got one timeout remaining. Down five. And you got to get in the end zone. At the 31 yard line, first down. Long, going for it. Bethel Johnson intercepted Grant. Grant with the INT. Well, Bill, from up here, it looks like Dustin Long throws a strike to Bethel Johnson and would have a touchdown, but it bounced out of his hands, and David Grant picks up the rebound. Dustin Long on the sidelines getting talked to by coaches, and I'm telling you, that's a great play by David, David Grant. Grant comes up with a big play. He's been mixed in everything here today. Take a look here. Watch the ball thrown. It's going to be right there. Bethel Johnson, the ball's going to be in his hands. He should make this catch, but it pops up, and Grant interception in the back of the end zone. Excellent play. Now Long, on the other hand, reacting TD. Johnson's in the end zone. Wait a minute. Did not have possession. So the Cowboys, with one minute to go, AM has only one timeout, and OSU trying to take its time in downing the football as Fields took the snap. And AM comes rushing over to make sure that they'll down it for him. Jared Penright puts a pretty good lick there on Dustin Long. So Vernon Grant comes up with the game saving interception. Boy, Bethel Johnson, who has played so well today, is going to look back on that one and go, oh, why couldn't I have had one more? As Johnson, six receptions, 107 yards, and one touchdown today. But the Cowboys, barring a fumble, have locked up their first Big 12 win over Texas A&M. Back-to-back quality victories is what they wanted. They got them. And OSU with a 28-23 thriller over Texas A&M. And this time, Gary, they're guarding the goalposts. No doubt about it. A lot of yellow <laughs> security around those goalposts on both ends of the field. They sense the fans would like to come down and do what they did two weeks ago. Let's look one more time at well, the play that turned it over. No doubt about it. This play at the end of the game, he has had a great game today. Bethel Johnson on the outside and just can't get this one to come down into his hands. The ball bounces up. Look at Massey pull the ball away. Massey number eight coming from the inside and Vernon Grant with the interception and a big play by the for the Cowboys. Yeah, terrific job by Massey to hang in there. Let's go down to Zach Klein with head coach Les Miles. All right, coach. Uh, congratulations on the victory. First victory over uh, Texas A&M since 1988. Didn't score in the second half. 
but defensively, big interception toward the, toward the end. It's very fitting that this defense came out in the first half, you know, really cost us in, in playing the pass, and it's fitting that they came out, and it, it had to be in their, in their area to win the game, and they made plays. You told me yesterday in your office you just wanted to get it close in the fourth quarter. You feel you guys would suck it up and come away with the victory, and you did. This team's got character. They want to play. We look forward to the rest of the season. Congratulations on the victory. Very much. Appreciate it. Bill, Oklahoma State back at 500, 4-4 four four on the year. And a homecoming win for the first time in the last five tries. Gary, what a victory for OSU. This is a good football team. Playing with confidence. And they've really got some momentum. Two big wins here for this program. Les Miles has got this program back on track. And next up, they go to Texas Tech in Lubbock. Meanwhile, AM will host Oklahoma. Doesn't get easier for the Aggies as OSU wins quite a contest here. Remember to join us next Saturday at 12.30 Eastern for our Dr. Pepper Big 12 football game of the week as the number 13 Colorado Buffaloes meet the Missouri Tigers. Coming up tonight at 7 Eastern, 4 Pacific, number 7 Texas faces Nebraska in Lincoln. Then it's the NFL show featuring Michael Irvin and Tony Siragusa. The Big 12 postgame report is next. This is Bill Land for Gary Reasons and Zach Klein saying so long from Stillwater where the Oklahoma State Cowboys win at 28-23 over the Texas A&M Aggies. So long, everybody.